Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto accidentally learns Sage Mode Council bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Nunter and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Pino has young Sage. Prologue. Suetan. Tepidama. Gamabunta, great leader of the mighty Toad clan, shoot three more water cannonballs at the nine-tailed fox demon, Kaiubi no Yoko, who was on rampage, attacking Ninja Village. But water attack could do nothing to the currently greatest demon on the earth, and his time on the battlefield was coming to an end too. How much more time do you need, Minato? I'm almost out of chakra. Amabunta said, looking at the approaching nine-tailed fox. Ten seconds. Man, who's standing on the top of Gamabunta's head, Minato Namakids, the fourth Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sado, laid down bundle he was holding in his hand before. Bundle was revealed to be a newborn baby with same yellow hair Minato had, wrapped into piece of clothes. Minato ran through hand seals. Shaiki Fuin. Almost immediately ghost figure of the death god appeared behind Minato. Even if only he could see Shinigami, everyone in 10 mile radius could feel temperature drop to a zero degrees, accompanied by great fear, enough to make even the Kaiubi freeze for a second. After several seconds of telepathic conversation between 4th Hokage and the Death God, ugly ghost hand repped its way through Minato's stomach and shoot towards the Kaiubi, catching its soul. Naruto, I hope you'll forgive me, my son Minato said to the boy lying in front of him on Gamabunta's head. The same moment Shinigami's hand brought Kaiubi's soul to the little boy's body hacking no few in Shiki. Shishu Fuin. Soul of the greatest demon was now sealed inside newborn baby. I hope you'll be seeing as a hero there goodbye in the distance Kaiubi's Yoki made body disappeared. Goodbye Minato Namakids. It was an honor to fight alongside with you, Gamabunta said as he lowered his head. Looks like I'm done there. Then he disappeared in a giant cloud of white smoke. What the hell? Shouted Gamabunta. He was back at the Mabakizan mountain, where his clan lived. But he was not alone. Naruto was loudly crying somewhere on his head. You didn't said that we will have a guest, Bunta Kun. Small aged toad in black cloak chuckled, but immediately went back to seriousness who is this little boy? His name is Naruto. Minato wished him to be Uzumaki, though I don't understand why, Fukasaku-sama. Replied toad leader. What will we do? I take it that this boy has Kayubi no Yoko sealed inside him. Gamma Bunta nodded. I don't think that it would be safe for him to be a Kanoha. But Fukasaku-sama, we cannot rise him. Bunta shouted. And why not? Another small ancient toad in black cloak appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Fukasaku is right. It is not safe for him to be in Kanoha right now. They might want revenge on the Kaiubi and attack or, worse, kill this little innocent tadpole. For once I agree with you, woman. Fukasaku whispered, but his wife, Shima, heard him. What did you say, old jerk? For next 10 minutes, before Naruto started crying even more loudly, Gamabunta watched two elders of Toad Clan fighting. Four years later. Shima was sitting on the stone step that led to her and Fukasaku's house, knitting, while watching little Naruto playing. Ma! Look what I can do! The blonde shouted, making the aged Toad look at him. When he had her attention, Naruto jumped high into the air and tried to do a backwards flip, he saw a senior Toad warrior do during their spars. Of course, young Jinchuriki lacked the skills needed to this and ended up falling into the big puddle on his back. Shima shook her head and returned to knitting as she watched him get up. I can do that. You'll see. The little blonde exclaimed. Ha, tell her that I can do that. He asked Fukasaku who walked into the yard Naruto and Shima were in. Tell ma what? The toad elder asked back, making the boy let out an angry cry from this unfairness anyway, Naruto-chan, I have to ask you something. This got Naruto's attention. Why do you want to ask me, pa? He asked Fukasaku. Naruto-chan, now you're old enough to start training, so I want to ask you. Do you want me to train you? Toad Elder saw interest in blonde Zerulean eyes. I will make you strong, Naruto-chan, I promise. Naruto jumped up and down and nodded eagerly. Of course I want, pa. He shouted. It won't be easy though, pa continued. I want to train. I want to be strong. The little blonde yelled. Very well. Fukasaku said. We will start tomorrow I will tell you some rules now. When we will be training, or when we are around other humans bar Jiraiya-chan, you should call me Fukasaku-sensei. You're a good boy, Naruto-chan, and good boys should be respectful with their teachers. Naruto nodded, though, not as eagerly as he did before. Okay, Fukasaku-sensei. The boy said. That will do, Naruto-chan. And the second rule. You shall do as I, or your other teachers, shall you have any, instruct you. The little Jinchuriki nodded again. Then Fukasaku looked at his wife. When we will have lunch. Shima stopped knitting and looked up at her husband. You again lost the count of time, you old toad. 
Your lunch is on the table, where it was for the last two hours. She replied in an annoyed tone. Fukasaku nodded and jumped towards his food into the house. Seven more years later. Good morning, Naruto-chan. Fukasaku greeted his apprentice. Naruto was now 11 years old. Harsh trainings with toads he'd undergone since he was four made him well built for his age. The boy wore dark khaki ninja-style pants, same color jacket. He had bandages on his wrists and several seals for weapons on hands. Good morning, Fukasaku-sensei. What will be today's lesson? I thought that time for you to come to your real home came. Naruto had puzzled expression on his face. He thought that Mabakuzen was his home for his entire life, even if he knew that his parents were Leaf Shinobi. So the following week Gamabunta will teach you everything about Kanahagakur no Sato. Hi, Fukasaku-sensei. I'll find him right now. But Naruto made step towards Toad Clan leader's place, but Fukasaku spoke again. Naruto. Once Bunta finishes, come here. I'll accompany you to your birthplace. Eight more days later. Are you ready, Naruto-chan? Fukasaku asked, checking boy's storage seals with his belongings. As usual, Fukasaku-sensei. Replied blonde boy. Let's go. As usual, Naruto was full of energy. Then get ready, we are leaving now. Fukasaku made a few hand seals, and Naruto instantly felt like something of incredible power pulled him out of his place. Next second this weird feeling left him, and he found himself in a cloud of white smoke. Not knowing exactly where he was, he slipped into his Tajutsu battle stance. Kanoha's Young Sage. Chapter 1. Kanoha and Genin Exams. It was early morning in Kanahagakur no Sato, peaceful as it was for more than decade. Yet one man was currently in the fight with every ninja's worst enemy. Yes, Saratobi Hiruzen, third Hokage, was doing paperwork. And it looked like aged Hokage was losing in the battle with those damn papers, as piles of them seemed only to grow thicker with every second past. Suddenly he fell chakra spike near village hall building, the same building he was in right now. I thought that they would arrive later, but on a good side of things, I'll have extra break from this damn paperwork. White smoke from whatever dimensional jutsu Fukasaku used cleared, and Naruto found himself in the center of Big Shinobi Village, standing right in front of Hokage office building. Naruto-chan, are you going to stand there all day? Being brought back to reality, boy ran to catch up with his toad sensei, and the duo entered the building. It seemed that Hokage was already waiting for them, as they reached Sirotobi's office without any need to wait. After knocking on the door, Fukasaku entered with Naruto following closely behind him. Good morning Sachirobi Dono. Good morning, Fukasaku-sama replied Hokage. I take it that the boy with you is Naruto. Both Toad and boy in question nodded. Yes. He is Naruto Uzumaki. The Toad elder said to Hokage. Good morning to you, Naruto-kun. Hiruzen greeted. After Naruto greeted Hokage, Saratobi for a minute or so was looking through papers on his desk before he found what he was looking for. These are forms for registration as Kanoha citizen. Please, fill them in. Hokage pointed to the table in the corner of his office. Naruto nodded and went there to complete his current task. When boy started filling in those damn papers, Hokage asked the Toad Elder. What you can tell me about Naruto, Fukasaku-sama? Please, move Yuanbu Ninja out for the time we are speaking. And play silencing jutsu. Hokage nodded and did as Fukasaku said. Well, as I wrote in the letter week ago, this boy is Namakids Minato's legacy, his son, and jailer of Kayubi no Yoko. Of course, this information for the safety of Naruto should not leave this walls. True. Saratobi agreed. What about his skills? He was trained by myself and several other toads since he was four. He was taught basic skills like tree climbing and water walking, art to jutsu style, some toad ninjutsu that human can do. He knows summoning jutsu and signed our contract. Also, Jiraiya Kun spent two years with this boy, teaching him the art of sealing. Naruto, given his circumstances, has great amount of chakra he can summon Gamabunta twice already, and for the same reason his chakra control is, let's say, awful. Hokage nodded in understanding. He is barely able to do normal henge and kawarimi, so he was taught a modified versions of these jutsu. Also, about bushins. He was never able to do one. Instead he uses Iwa bushins. You tested his elemental affinities? Saratobi asked. Fukasaku nodded. Yes. He has wind as primary element and earth as secondary. And if he uses that power, he will also have fire and, maybe, lava. Interesting. Has he ever used Kayubi's power before? Ayubi's Yoki gives him great regeneration and healing abilities, but I've never felt demon's powers being used for anything else, this boy has incredible stamina, and I think that this also has something to do with Kayubi. Saratobi nodded again, as he agreed with the Toad Elder. One year ago we started his sage training. Already? Hokage asked a bit more louder that he should have had. Something wrong? Naruto asked from the corner where he was filling in his forms. No, no, everything is alright. 
Saratobi turned back to Fukasaku. You trained him to be a sage. He is only 11 now. I don't see a problem there. This boy was raised in a close contact with nature. Even so, his sage training isn't complete yet. He was taught how to use only sage to jutsu now. No senpu ninjutsu or jinjutsu. Those will be taught when he is at least 14. Okay, Hokage sighed. What you'll say about his current level. He is strong enough to defeat a strong Jounin in a match of brute force, and he often does unpredictable moves, but he's as very straightforward and lacks actual battle experience, spars are only spars after all, so I'll say that he is on average to high Chunin level now. And does he know about his heritage? Yes. And about his burden too. There was pause. I finished, Hokage-sama. Naruto came back with his forms filled. Good, Naruto-kun, here you go. Saratobi gave the boy a pair of keys, some money and several more papers. For now you live in an apartment complex not far from the academy. You'll be given scholarship till you graduate. It is not very big, but it should be enough. Papers are for the landlord of apartment complex and for the ninja academy Naruto nodded. Saratobi paused for a second. Almost forgot. Fukasaku-sama mentioned that you know toad to jutsu, but that style isn't very well suited for academy level spars. Hokage took a scroll from his desk. This is a basic to jutsu style taught at the academy. I don't insist, but it would be better if you learn this one too. Hi, Hokage-sama. Do you need any supplies for academy? Naruto shook his head while touching scroll in his pants pocket. Then, I think, you can join academy today. Third lesson will start in an hour. Hi. May I leave? Hokage nodded. Before you go, one more thing, Naruto-kun. Fukasaku spoke. I know that this will be hard for you, but try not show your real skills. And nothing about your father and Kaiubi. Hi, Fukasaku-sensei. Good. If you'll need Toad's help, summon us. The Toad Elder paused for a second. It'll also be better for you if nobody other than Hokage knows about your summoning contract. Naruto nodded. Then you may go, Naruto-kun. The boy nodded again. Goodbye, Fukasaku-sensei, Hokage-sama. Naruto calmly walked out of Hokage's office and closed the door. Twenty seconds later Saratobi could hear Naruto running at the breakneck speed. What a boy. On the top of the stone head third Hokage black-clad shinobi with leaf hideate watched everything that happened in the Hokage's office through his spyglass. Well, it looks like this boy is Yinchuriki of Nine-Tailed Demon. Danzo-sama will like this. This boy should become his subordinate. With this the man disappeared via shunsen in a swirl of wind and leaves. As Naruto exited Hokage's office and closed the door, he put everything the old man gave him into an empty storage scroll and then ran out of the building. The streets of Konoha were now pretty crowded, so running towards the academy was hard, but remembering his sensei's words, Naruto never jumped to the roofs. Fifteen minutes later he arrived to the academy, having just enough time to copy timetable and to fill whatever papers he will need to fill to join. When he finished with signing the papers, break had already started long ago, so he had about two more minutes, and still he had to find the classroom of class he was joining, the bell rang about half a minute before he finally found the classroom he needed. He knocked on the door. Several seconds later a young man in standard Chuanin attire came out into the corridor. Man had distinctive horizontal scar on his face. Imino Aruka, how can I help you? Asked the man. Good morning, iruka san I'm Naruto Uzumaki and I was said that I'll be joining your class. Naruto gave the papers from the academy principal to the teacher. Iruka looked through them. So you are that new student Hokage-sama told me about. Naruto nodded. Hi. I think. When Iruka returned to the classroom, his class was already chatting in a full voice, as if the lesson already finished. Silence. No reaction. Silence. Still no reaction. I said silence. Iruka's giant head shouted. This time class was silent in a second. Okay, class, you remember, I said that we will have new student this week. Hi, sensei. Class answered in unison. Haruka continued. As your new classmate arrived earlier than Hokage-sama expected, he will join this class today. We are graduation class. Again, why will he join us, shouldn't he be with kids who just started academy? Asked boy with red triangular marks on his cheeks and little puppy on his head. Said puppy barked as he agreed with the boy. Hiba, Hokage himself checked his level. The new student is more than capable to study in this class. Haruka turned to the door. You may enter. The door opened and boy with blonde hair standing in every possible direction entered. The boy had bright blue with little tint of green eyes and three strange whiskers on each cheek. He was dressed in pretty simple khaki pants and jacket. The boy had two scrolls in the pockets of his pants and another one, which looked like it had been used for ages, in his hand along with desk set. Good morning. The boy said politely. So, why don't you introduce yourself? asked Iruka. The boy nodded. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. 
My parents were shinobi of Konoha, but both died during Kayubi's attack, so I was raised and trained by my father's friends outside of the village and came back here just several hours ago. I like fruits, stewed vegetables and some dish I think you've never heard of. I don't really like meat, but I'm okay with it. I like my sensei, my friends, nature and its serenity. And I love you, my Nitaian. I want to become shinobi so that people could live in peace, and, finally, I hope to make friends with you all. Silence. Thank you Naruto. The boy nodded again and went to the back row of the classroom where he sat on the free stool. Then Naruto opened scroll he had in his hands. It had many small angular signs with occasional drawings in it. Naruto unrolled to where free space started and readied himself. Timetable says that it is history lesson now it'll be interesting to see another point of view, but only if teacher is as cool as Pa Sensei. But eventually Naruto found Aruka Sensei to be boring lector and decided that he could see what that academic tojutsu was, Hokage said that it would be better if he learned it, Naruto opened the scroll Hokage gave him. This style looks weak by itself, but then again, this is a basic tojutsu style that be adapted for almost anyone. It was everything that Naruto could say. While style was more offensive than toads or sages, it lacked powerful moves or combos and was pretty easy to be overpowered while in defense. Still, I need to learn it sighed the boy. The rest of the lesson Naruto spent trying to memorize moves of the academic tojutsu style. When bell for lunch break rang, Naruto tried to walk out of the classroom but was stopped by a dark-haired boy in blue t-shirt with a chia symbol and white shorts, surrounded by a crowd of girls. Fight me. Said boy. Immediately whispers of Sasuke-sama is so oh 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 cool started. Why? Naruto responded. How dare you speak to Sasuke-sama like that? Screamed two biggest fangirls of Ichiha, blonde and pink-haired banshees. I said fight me, idiot. Roared Ichiha boy, now identified as Sasuke. I'm not interested. Stated Naruto and tried to walk away, but before he could make the fourth step, he felt Sasuke's fist approaching his head. Naruto leaned forward and Sasuke's fist missed its target. At the same time Naruto hit Sasuke's ankle and sidestepped. As a result, Ichiha fell on his hands while Naruto walked away, trying to ignore enraged fangirls of Sasuke. This new boy, Naruto, is interesting thought one of the few girls that wasn't completely after Sasuke. The final lesson for that day was physical education, which started with 10 laps around Academy Stadium. After years of training at Mabakuzen this was easy for Naruto, who completed task with the second best time in history of Academy, right after someone named Rock Lee who graduated the previous year. Other exercises were also easy for Naruto's second half of the lesson was assigned for spars. Naruto was put against a lazy boy from Nara clan by second teacher, white-haired Chuanin Mizuk, which infuriated Sasuke, who wanted revenge on Naruto for his come down. As this was first day Naruto had ever seen academic tojutsu style, he almost lost his spar using it. Actually, he won only because of his stamina and constant dodging. After Naruto's spar was over, Haruka approached him. It looked like you was fighting for the first time. Naruto, you said that you were trained. Asks Card Chuanin. You see, Hiruka sensei I was taught two different tojutsu styles, but Hokage-sama said that they both weren't suited for academy-level spars and gave me scroll with basic style taught here. I received it only this morning, so Naruto tried to explain situation. Oh, I see. After the school day was finished, Naruto ran towards the apartment complex where Hokage said he will live. It was pretty old, five-story building with pale yellow walls. His flat was on the fifth floor. It was small, but looked comfy. There was bedroom, kitchen combined with living room, toilet and bathroom. Naruto unsealed his belongings from the scroll and laid them out. When he finished this, Naruto went to the landlord and paid for the first month. Then, with the money he had left, Naruto went to buy food to the nearest shop. When this task was finished, he went to train. Naruto found an empty training ground and went there. He removed his khaki jacket under which there was black t-shirt with orange flame-like looking spiral on the back. Naruto laid his jacket on the grass and concentrated. After five seconds dark red outlining appeared around his eyes. When he opened them, instead of blue, they were amber with horizontal almost rectangular pupil. Naruto immediately felt three people watching him from different spots on this training ground. Shit. They mustn't know about my sage mode yet. Closing his eyes again boy let natural energy off his body. Outlining around his eyes disappeared and his eyes under closed eyelids turned back to normal. I need to improve my sage to jutsu, but, obviously, I can't do that now. Ninjutsu are also out of question. All of them I know are not for academy students oh, I still need to learn academic tojutsu style. Sasuke watched Naruto learning academic tojutsu from his hiding spot. That boy could defeat him in tojutsu this morning, but during spar at the academy he looked like he didn't knew any moves and now he was learning academic tojutsu style. That was interesting. 
From another spot wide-eyed girl from Hyuga clan was watching Naruto with her by Akigen active. At the beginning Naruto gathered great amount of energy from outside world, which intrigued Hinata greatly, but then he suddenly released it as if he sensed her and didn't want her to know what that could do you are very interesting, Naruto. Lastly, one of Danzu's subordinates was spying on Naruto's training. This boy could sense me or those two children from 300 meters with those weird eyes, impressive. This boy will definitely be good warrior under Danzu-sama's tutelage. With this man shun shined away. The second day held nothing interesting for Naruto there were only four lectures, so the blonde boy continued reading the scroll about academic tojutsu. When torturing lectures finished, Naruto went to his home, grabbed lunch, and ran to distant training ground he returned to his apartment only after sunset and after quick shower and dinner, he went to sleep. The next day started interesting. People in the streets looked at him with suspicions, sometimes nodding or shaking their heads. Naruto sent some chakra to his ears for enchanted hearing. Well, he didn't like the results he got I heard that this boy is demon. That guy from the bar said that he is Kaiubi reincarnated. He looks suspicious with those whisker marks like he is a fox disguised. Well, Naruto decided that he will tell Hokage-sama about it after the school is finished. The first lesson was range practice with Aruka-sensei, who seemed to be oblivious to the rumors. Naruto had fourth score with shurikens and sixth with kunais in the class. Not brilliant, but he really didn't need more, the second lesson was ninjutsu with that white-haired Chuan and Mizuki. And it was review test on Bushin Jutsu. Sasuke Chiha. Mizuki called. Sasuke, cheered by his fanjulers, created five clones without any problems, earning more of Sasuke Sama is so oh 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 cool. Squeaks. Okay, okay, Chuanin waited a bit. And, finally, Yuzumaki Naruto. Ah no, Sensei, I can't use this Jutsu. Can I use another type of Bushin? Naruto asked. I heard that this boy is Kaiubi reincarnated. Definitely, such monster as him must die. But he can be useful for me until that. Mizuki thought. No. You failed. Whole class, well, except for sleeping Shikamaru and Stoic Aburam Shino, laughed. Idiot. Yelled pink-haired Banshee. Sasuke-sama is the best, you, loser. The next two lessons again were lectures with Aruka-sensei. But they were about first aid, something that Naruto didn't know very well, because, when Jiraiya was away, he was the only human at Mabakizan, and Toads hadn't have much information about human's medicine. After the lessons for today finished, Naruto immediately ran towards the Hokage Tower. It seemed that in past few hours citizens' attitude towards him became worse, as he was forced to dodge stones, bottles or cans, thrown at him several times. And almost everyone was speaking about him being Kaiubi reborn. Deciding not to risk encounter with Chuanins at the reception downstairs, Naruto just ran past them, then upstairs, until he was in front of the doors of old man's office. Boy knocked on the door and waited for any response. After 10 or so seconds it came. Come in. Naruto entered the Hokage's office and bowed slightly. Good afternoon, Hokage-sama. I take it that you have something important to tell me, Naruto-kun. After watching the boy for several seconds aged Hokage stated. There is rumor spread in the village about me being Kayubi no Yoko. I was already attacked by some villagers. Naruto reported. Well, three of civilian councilmen already came to me this morning demand for the execution for you. Public one, no less. Blonde boy felt like he was going to die right there. Let's say that they got less than nothing. Hokage continued. Don't be afraid, I can handle them, and I know that those rumors were anything but truth. But many villagers are stupid enough to honestly believe in this lie. Naruto sighed. What shall I do then? That will definitely be very hard, but you should ignore them, or they may just gain proof Naruto nodded. But I'll have two Anbu units watching over you, just in case. Hi, Hokage-sama. And one more thing. What is it, Naruto? One of my instructors at Academy, Mizuki, acts suspiciously like he is planning something bad I don't know Naruto tried to explain situation with Mizuki, but felt like he failed. He was completely loyal to Konoha before, and I have doubts that he may be planning something against Village, but if he continues acting strangely, you are free to report to me, Naruto-kun. The boy once again nodded. Hi. Next 34 weeks almost event less. Well, Naruto needed to evade villagers' attacks for finishing Yandame's work on a daily basis, and assigned Anbu weren't too much help there. At the academy Naruto was somewhere near the bottom. He was pretty good at target practice, but with his still awful academic style to jutsu, non-existent jinjutsu casting abilities that was of no help. And while he had his stone clones and modified Henge and Kawarimi, Mizuki never let him pass any test at the theoretical part of studies things weren't much better, but mainly because Naruto never pushed himself there too hard, Hiruka-sensei was cold with him for the first month, but then it changed for the better, even if the scarred Chuanin was often infuriated by Naruto. Who wasn't listening to him. 
during these weeks Hokage had a lot of to do to protect Naruto from either civilian and even some shinobi councilmen who tried to execute Boy just for the fact that he was alive, or from Danzo, who tried to take Boy under his wing and create a powerful war machine for himself only. It was hard, but Siratobi every time said to those fools that Naruto will live and he will live like a normal ninja. So, both Aruka sensei and Hokage became something like family figures for the blonde. Although on public he still used respectful suffixes with their names, in private yeah, they were Aruka Nai san and Hokage Jiji also, there were two people from Ichiraku Raymond whom Naruto too considered as his family. Gucci and his daughter Aum were almost the only people who were always nice with him and never overcharged him yeah, they also were a part of his surrogate family. Aruka made himself a cup of tea when he heard somebody knocking on his door. Sighing, Chunin went there, leaving his cup standing on the table. When Aruka left kitchen, single shadow slipped through vent light into his apartment, poured some medical powder into the cup, and went away through same vent light he entered before Scar Chunin returned back to kitchen. Okay, everyone, Aruka san is unwell today, so me and Beku san will be your examiners. Mizuki said. First part of your exam is written test. Get ready. Naruto was the last one who got his test papers. And he found out that his questions were ridiculously hard. Some required Chunin or even Jounin level of knowledge, others were just impossible to know for ordinary shinobi or academy student. But then Naruto noticed that there was small breeze over his paper. Looks like they are trying to fail me with Hinjutsu. Even if he wasn't able to cast any illusions or was awful with detection without his Nitain's help, Naruto could dispel them quite efficiently. Kai. Naruto sent a pulse of chakra and true to his theory about Jinjutsu, his paper changed and questions there become normal. Not that he knew everything or even needed to know everything asked in this test, but Naruto did pretty much decently. The next part of your exam will be physical training. Everybody out. Mizuki announced. Naruto and other potential genins went outside to the academy stadium. The first thing they needed to do was to run 20 laps. This was an easy task for Naruto. Every day he ran two or three laps around the whole village. After that there were tests for dodging and balancing abilities, also quite easy for Naruto, even if both Chuanins obviously tried to fail him, and then there was target practice of course, Sasuke was the best there the only thing where Ichiha boy was second to keeping low profile Naruto was stamina well, he was best there until Naruto's turn. Okay, shurikens first. Naruto was given 8 metal stars for 8 targets 4 at 30 meters and 4 at 50. Naruto threw his first shuriken at distant target. 2 points. Mizuki announced, even if it was clear that Naruto hit bullseye. Now, now, Mizuki, let's see, what would you say now Naruto sent some wind chakra into his second shuriken and threw it beside any targets. At first. Half a second later projectile began to change its direction. Shuriken hit the first target, made fist-sized hole in its bullseye, and flew further. The second target also gained hole in it, giving Naruto 9 more points, before shuriken finally stopped. In the wall behind targets. Now even Mizuki could deny Naruto's points from this test, with a kunai throwing blonde boy also used same strategy with wind chakra. After the lunch there was Tajutsu part of exam. All that was needed to hold your ground against either of Chunin's for one minute. There Naruto decided to go with defensive moves of Toad's style. While Beku was stronger and more experienced, Naruto's defense was a tough thing for him, even with first gates opened. Mizuki had stopwatch and tried to fail Naruto by giving other Chunin more time. But after three minutes it was obvious that one minute time limit passed and the white-haired Chunin was forced to pass Naruto there. Next were Jinjutsu and Ninjutsu parts of exam. It was simple. First you needed to detect and dispel Jinjutsu. Then you needed to demonstrate three basic Ninjutsu. Henge, Kawarimi and Clone. Those who passed this part of exam were given their hideates and declared passed. After two or so hours, it was finally Naruto's turn. So, Naruto, Jinjutsu first. Try to find and dispel it. Mizuki said. Let's see how you deal with this one, demon. Naruto turned around and tried to see any sign of illusion in the room. He found none with his eyes. You have 30 seconds left. Shit. Naruto closed his eyes and reached for his sage mode, not activating it. Now he could feel chakra cover placed over whole room, but mostly over the clock. Got it. The boy opened eyes. Kai. But instead of illusion disappearing from the clock, the whole room disappeared and Naruto found himself in the middle of the hell, standing right in front of giant red furred fox with nine tails. The fox opened its mouth and tried to swallow the blonde boy in front of it. So that was two-layer Jinjutsu Kai. Naruto created Chakra Pulse strong enough not only to destroy illusion, but also to knock both Chunins off their feet. Okay Mizuki said reluctantly. Now, show us Henge change into me. Naruto did no hand seals. He just transformed into the white-haired Chunin. But his transformation wasn't Henge Mizuki knew. 
Instead of clouds of white smoke, it looked like fast-moving blue ring of chakra, reshaping boy. What was that? It wasn't Henge. The white-haired Chuanan almost yelled. Why? This is Henge just modified version which requires more chakra to create. Naruto answered. Never heard of anything like this. Where did you learn that? Beku asked. My sensei created it for me. And who was your sensei? Mizuki asked. Naruto remained quiet. Okay Kawarimi next. Change with that chair. The Chuanin pointed to the chair across the room. Naruto again did no hand seals, but performed jutsu flawlessly. If you don't count that it again looked not completely like normal Kawarimi and now back. Naruto again performed jutsu without any problems. And, finally, create as many clones as you can. Naruto began his hand seals for stone clone jutsu, but Mizuki stopped him. I need only simple clones. Nothing else. Sorry, but I can't do that jutsu. Naruto said. What a pity if you could, you would pass. But as you can't, you fail. Naruto lowered his head and walked out of room. What do you think about Naruto? The Hokage asked nine Jounins in his office that were watching the exam through the crystal ball. He failed like the one of the Jounins started, but caught Saratobi's look that promised him a lot of pain if he finished that sentence. Naruto is much stronger than he lets on. Not looking away from his precious orange book said silver-haired Jounin known as Hata Kakashi. This boy has a lot of potential. I think that you should pass him, Hokage-sama. But why? Another Jounin asked. He couldn't even do clone. It's e rank jutsu. How someone that weak could become shinobi of Konoha. Naruto has incredible amount of chakra. That is the reason he can't do simple jutsus. But if you saw, he was about to do b rank earth style cloning jutsu when he was stopped. The Hokage said. Physical clones made of stone are much better than simple illusions. Naruto was sitting on the branch of tree near the academy building. He knew that Mizuki would do anything to fail him. True, this wasn't the reason for his current bad mood. Those fangirls of Ichiha that was the reason now Naruto needed to do something to become Genin. Hey Naruto. Boy looked down and saw Mizuki. I know that you are angry with me for failing you. But in rules it is said that you must perform clone jutsu and nothing else. Naruto thought that this could be his chance. But there is still one thing you can do to pass this exam. Yes. What is it? What I must do? Blonde boy asked. It is simple. You need to steal the forbidden scroll from the Hokage Tower. This is the test for your steel's abilities and on spot thinking. Are you in? The white-haired Chuanin said. So you've decided to make your move Mizuki? Naruto thought yes. Good. Then meet me in four hours in the forest near fifth training ground. Hi. Naruto leaped off the tree and ran towards the Hokage Tower. Now all I have to do is to wait for the scroll and then kill you, demon. Mizuki disappeared via Shunshin. Naruto entered the Hokage Tower and went straight to Sirotobi's office. He heard voices from that side of the door, but his business was very important and needed to be done right now Naruto knocked. Second later bearded Jown and opened the door. What do you need, kid? Asked man. I need to speak with Hokage-sama. Naruto said. And then added. Now. Hey, pa, this is Naruto boy and he wishes to speak with you right now. The Jounin shouted. Asuma, how many times have I said you not to call me pa during Jounin meetings? Asuma visibly shrank under Hokage's and father's furious glare. What is it, Naruto? Old man asked, now standing right in front of the blonde boy. Can we speak in private? Saratobi nodded. They went into the corridor and entered a supply room. Hokage performed hand seals for the silencing jutsu. This is about Mizuki. He made his move. Naruto said. Oh, and what was it? The Hokage asked. After he failed me in the exam, he said that I still can pass if I take the forbidden scroll from this tower and give it to him. I suppose that he will flee from this village with the scroll. But he wants me to steal it so I will be guilty one there. Naruto tried to explain. I see when you came here, Fukasaku-sama said that you can defeat average Shunin. Hope you still can do that. The boy nodded. Good. So, here is the plan. You'll take that scroll. I'll make full search party, so there will be no suspicions. When you meet with Mizuki, you'll have to protect the scroll and defeat him. There will be a platoon of Anbu just in case you need help. Naruto nodded again. This will be B rank mission and if you complete it, you'll get your Hidi A10 note and your personal record. Hi. So, Naruto, the scroll you are looking for is in the old man explained how to get forbidden scroll without being caught. And remember, I give you 15 minutes to take it and flee from the tower. Naruto nodded. The Hokage paused for a second to release the silencing jutsu. Mission start. Iruka was making himself a cup of coffee. He just woke up. Suddenly he heard somebody knocking on his door. Sighing, Scarred Chunin went to the door and faced Mizuki, who was obviously in a great hurry. Something happened Mizuki? Iruka asked. Naruto stole the forbidden scroll and is trying to flee the village. 
We must catch him as fast as we can. The white-haired Chuanin almost yelled. Shit. Haruka ran into his room, took his gear, and joined search party, forgetting about his coffee. News he just received were enough to wake him up completely. Three hours later he entered forest near one of the training grounds. And to his surprise, he found Naruto in the first clearing. Blonde boy looked like he was training for at least several hours straight, that was strange. Found you. Naruka sensei Are you alright? We were said that you were unwell today. Naruto said. What the hell are you doing? You stole the forbidden scroll, Naruto. They can execute you for this. The scarred Chunin yelled. Shit. Nobody thought that there would be anybody beside me, Mizuki and Anbu what must I do? Tell him about my mission from Hokage. Or just say that I did it to pass Mizuki's test. Naruto thought. The second one, I think. Mizuki mustn't know that I know what he is planning oi, sensei, I failed my exam today, but Mizuki sensei said that I still can pass if I give him this scroll. What? Then it hit Aruka. Mizuki wanted this scroll for himself and just made Naruto do all the dirty work. But before he could think about any way around, Mizuki appeared in the clearing. You found him before me what a pity oh, Haruka, don't be so sad, you'll be buried as a hero who tried to prevent the demon from fleeing the village with the valuable scroll. Mizuki laughed. Naruto, you, brat, you know why everybody hates you. You're demon. You're the Kaiubi. Now, die, demon brat. The white-hired Chuanin took the Uma shuriken from his back and launched it at Naruto. But jumped in front of the blonde boy and blocked the projectile with his kunai. What are you doing? Why are you protecting him? He killed your family. The white-haired Chuanin yelled. No, Naruto is not the Kaiubi. I also heard those rumors, but I didn't take that on trust, so I watched him. Naruto may be loud and not the best student, hell, he may be infuriating sometimes, but he is nothing like demon. He has no hatred. He is just orphan child with a great burden to carry. Haruka replied. And as a teacher, I must protect my students with everything I have. So much the worse for you Mizuki threw the second big shuriken, and Haruka couldn't block it. He waited for pain to come, but the only thing he felt was how he hit the ground with his right side. Scarred Chuanin looked up and saw Naruto where he himself was a moment ago with the Uma shuriken in the middle of his chest. There were dark red outlining around boy's eyes. Thank you, Haruka sensei. Naruto opened his eyes, yellow with a rectangular horizontal pupil, like the toads have. He took shuriken out of his body and dropped it on the ground. Mizuki team, you tried to kill my precious person. You'll pay for that. Like idiot like you can do anything to me, demon scum. Mizuki reached for his pouch, took out a kunai and prepared for the attack. Naruto didn't charge into the combat right away. Instead he hit the ground, creating a small earthquake that sent the white-haired Chuanin flying. In the air Mizuki couldn't dodge Naruto's punch, and his attempt to block it failed as both his arm broke from the tremendous force behind that punch. Mizuki flew through four thick trees before stopping in the rock. Naruto appeared in front of the traitorous Chuanin with forbidden scroll in his hands. 1. Never underestimate your opponent. And 2. Never betray Kanoha. Take him. Seven Anbu units dropped in front of the blonde from the trees, grabbed Mizuki and disappeared with him via Shunshin. Second later the Hokage himself appeared in a whirl of wind and leaves. Good work, Naruto, mission success. The old man said. You're wounded. Shouldn't you visit hospital? Naruto shook his head. Nah, I'll be as good as new the next morning. And, you know, I hate hospitals. The Hokage nodded and then he looked at Aruka. All that you saw about Naruto's abilities is an S-rank secret for now. The scarred Chunin audibly gulped and nodded. Good, here you go, Naruto. Saratobi took New Leaf Hideate from his robe's pocket and gave it to Naruto. Thank you, old man. The blonde boy said while tying Hideate around his head. Naruto. Show some respect to the Hokage. Hiruka almost yelled at the blonde boy. Oh, it's okay, Hiruka-san. Old man replied. Now, Naruto, come with me. Naruto took Hokage's hand and they both disappeared in a swirl of wind and leaves. Second later they appeared in the Hokage's office. Oh, Hokage Jiji, hope you won't be very angry that I learned a move from this scroll. Shadow clone to be exact. I just had nothing to do while I was waiting for Mizuki to appear and Naruto said quietly. You learned a rank ninjutsu in three hours. Hokage shouted. Naruto immediately stepped back. Saratobi saw that and calmed down. Sorry, Naruto, just a bit shocked I think that this may be an extra reward for your mission and I have another mission for you. What is it? The blonde asked. It will be long-term mission. You'll be put as a third team member on Sasuke Chiha's team. Your objectives will be restraining said boy's ego. If it will continues to grow, I'm afraid he will explode. Both men chuckled. And second, you'll watch over him. I'm afraid he may betray village for the power. Sasuke has unhealthy obsession with his revenge and his mental health is questionable. 
But Council closes their eyes on that as he is the last oh so precious Achiha in the village. Even if I don't like him, I agree. Naruto said. Kanoha doesn't need one more traitor. Especially Achiha. But Hokage lighted his pipe. It was a long day for you. And tomorrow you have your team placement. Get some rest. Hi. Naruto replied while exiting old man's office. Kanoha's young sage. Chapter 2. Team 7. First thing Naruto did in the morning, after two laps around the village, shower and breakfast, he went to market district and, with many difficulties, like people who didn't want to sell him anything, bought new clothes. He decided that he was to change his style a bit since he was genin of Kanahagakur now. After that he went to Hokage Tower to make photo for his ninja registration. As it was still a bit early in the morning, there was no one except photographer. With his photo made, Naruto went to Hokage to give it to him. Again, there were no visitors, so he had no need to wait. Naruto give his registration form, now completed with photo, when someone else ran into the office. Get ready, old man. I'll defeat you today. Naruto saw eight nine-year-old dark-haired boy. Most conspicuous detail about this boy was very long green scarf he wore around his neck. Boy tried to attack Hokage, but tripped over his own scarf and fell on the floor face first. Naruto snatched him by his collar and lifted him into the air. You. Put me down. You know who I am boy shouted. I don't care who you are. You tried to attack Hokage. Naruto stated. I'm Hokage's grandson. Put me down. Naruto looked at Siratobi. Aged man nodded. Yeah Naruto, meet my grandson, Kanohamaru. Blonde Shinobi nodded and put Kanohamaru boy down. So, Naruto, your mission starts in a few hours. Are you ready? Mission? Kanohamaru asked. Boy looked at his grandfather's table and saw Naruto's papers. He is just giving you ninja registration form. True, but he already completed B rank mission. Naruto is much stronger than everybody thinks. Hokage said. Here you are, honorable grandson. You again tried to attack Hokage-sama. Panting Jounin in dark glasses entered office. Man shot glare of hatred towards Naruto, who decided that this was his time to disappear. Naruto was walking towards academy. And somebody was following him using awful camouflage. Parallelopipedal stone made from old cardboard. Deciding that he had enough, Naruto stopped and in a single movement of his foot sent stone flying, leaving camouflageless Konohamaru on the ground. What do you want from me? He asked younger boy. Grandpa said you are strong. Teach me something cool. Konohamaru asked. Well why do you want to defeat old man and take his place? Naruto asked in response. Everybody sees me as honorable grandson, but I want them to see me for who I am, not who I'm related to. Younger boy almost shouted. Hmm. That is a good reason. But are you ready to be Hokage? Kanohamaru looked at Naruto not understanding what older boy meant. I mean, Hokage must be strong cause he needs this strength to protect everyone in the village. He is responsible for everyone and if he makes mistake people may be hurt or killed and Hokage would be the reason. If you aren't ready to be responsible for everyone there, you shouldn't be Hokage. Kanohamaru thought about tea and became a bit sad. But as I said, your reason for power is good enough, so I'll teach you something. Younger boy's face lit up. They turned from the street and entered park and found secluded clearing. Here we are. I'll teach you modified henge. It doesn't create smoke clouds and is a bit more stable than usual, but requires more chakra this will be D-rank jutsu, not E, like normal. Ah, in this version you can make minor changes without doing jutsu over. Naruto did hand signs slowly enough and blue ring rose from his feet, changing him into perfect replica of Hokage. When you do this jutsu you need to have clear picture of whom or what you want to transform into just like it is normal henge. Kanohamaru nodded and did hand signs Naruto showed him. First attempt, of course, could be counted as a failure Hokage's grandson looked like something, only distantly resembling human. Hour and 15 minutes later Kanohamaru was finally able to do modified henge normally. Naruto looked at Sun and suddenly remembered something. Sorry, but need to hurry. I have team placement in 10 minutes. Naruto ran from the park. When he entered village streets, he immediately jumped to the roof and ran there to reach academy faster. Naruto entered academy when he had only two minutes left. He entered classroom and took his usual place when he was greeted by Sakura. Why you came here, idiot? Only those who passed exams can be here. Pink-haired Banshee yelled. Naruto checked if he was deaf now. When he was sure he wasn't, he answered. If you stop bitching and take better look at me, you'll find the reason. Naruto said, pointing to Hideate on his head. Where did you, loser, steal that? Blonde boy put his hands on his ease, so Sakura's screams weren't hurting them. You should go to its owner now and give it back. Silence. Haruka yelled, saving Naruto from further torture. Thank you. We are here today for you team placement. But what is Naruto doing here? He stole somebody's hideate. There's no stopping for Sakura. Sakura. 
Hokage personally passed Naruto, so if you question his decision, ask him. If there are no more questions, let's start. Iruka sensei a red list of teams along with their future sensei. Team 7. Sasuke Chiha silent HN was heard from Sasuke. Haruno Sakura pink haired girl yelled yes. Take that, Ino pig Naruto had to use all his will not to yell no. Sakura, be quiet. Last member of team 7 will be Uzumaki Naruto this time Sakura yelled no. Your sensei will be Hada Kakashi. Teammate Naruto wasn't listening to Iruka sensei anymore. He took his scroll with Jutsu and began reading. Two and a half hours later only team 7 was there in the classroom. All other teams already met their senseis. Sasuke was, as usual, brooding about his revenge, Naruto was reading his scroll, and Sakura was dying from boredom. Then door opened and silver-haired Jounin in standard attire with mask on lower part of his face and headband over his left eye looked in. You're late. Sakura yelled. Jounin ignored here. First impression. One of you is loud, others are boring. Meet me on the roof in five minutes. Jounin disappeared in a poof of smoke before anybody could say him anything. Three young Jenins walked to the roof where they found same silver-haired Jounin sitting on the railing with orange book in his hands. When Jenin sat on the rungs, he closed his book and hid it in the pouch. Well, hello. Let's introduce ourselves. I mean your likes, dislikes, hobbies and plans for the future. Why don't you tell us about yourself first? Sakura asked. Okay. Jounin smiled with his only visible eye. My name is Hata Kakashi. My likes and dislikes he paused. Well, I have many hobbies, and I really don't have plans for the future. All three genins thought along the line hell, the only thing we learned is his name. You're next, Pinky. My name is Haruno Sakura. My likes are she looked at Sasuke and squeaked. My dislikes are Ino Pig, this idiot. She pointed at Naruto. And unpunctual people. My hobby Sakura looked at Sasuke and squeaked again. My plans for the future looked at Sasuke squeaked and blushed crimson. Ichiha boy shivered. Fangirl. Kakashi thought. Blonde, you are next. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. My likes are nature and its serenity, my senseis, my friend and precious people. I like training and tasty food. And love you, Nitai and my dislikes are traitors, those who hate others without knowing them or a good reason to do so. My plans for the future I don't really know yet, but I want peace for everyone. Or at least for as many people as possible. Kakashi nodded. And brooding boy. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. I have few likes and many dislikes. I don't have hobbies. My plans for the future no, ambition, is to kill certain man and revive my clan. Ichiha boy ignored Sasuke-sama is so ko o o o all from Sakura. Avenger, his fangirl and pacifist I have interesting team this year. Okay. For today you are free, but tomorrow at 6 o'clock at 3rd training ground, you'll have your real genin test. What? We are genins already. Sakura yelled. No. Academy test is only to see if you're capable to be genin of Kanahagakur. Your sensei, me, will decide if you'll become active duty genin. Remember, there is 66% of failure in this test and a piece of advice for you. Don't have breakfast if you don't want to puke. Bye. Kakashi disappeared in a whirl of wind and leaves. Naruto was the last one, save for Kakashi, of course, to arrive at training ground number 3. He was greeted by tummy rumblings from Sakura and Sasuke. In was 5.57 in the morning, and they waited for Kakashi Sasuke was brooding, Sakura was thinking about the ways to go on a date with Sasuke Naruto was reading his scroll. Yo. Kakashi, who had big backpack greeted. You're late. Naruto and Sakura shouted. Well, it was almost 9 now. Sorry, black cat crossed my road so I had to walk long way to avoid bad luck. Silver-haired Jounin smiled with his visible eye. Liar. Sakura yelled. Kakashi ignored her. Anyway he took big alarm clock from his backpack and set them for 10.30. Then he took two bells and tied them to his belt. Your test will be to get one of these bells. Those who won't do that till time goes off will go back to academy. But there are only two bells Sakura began. This means one of you will definitely go back to academy. Oh, almost forgot he took two bentos from his backpack. After the test is finished, one of you, the worst from this team, will be tied to a tree, while other two will eat lunch in front of him, you can use any jutsu or tools and remember, come at me with intent to kill or you won't get bell. You have 90 minutes. Start. Sasuke and Sakura disappeared from the clearing, but Naruto remained there. Aren't you going to hide? If we must attack you, then why run and hide from you? Answered Naruto. Then he reached for his pouch and took smoke bomb from it. Next second there was big smoke hiding Naruto from Kakashi. Interesting move then two dozens of shurikens, glowing with chakra, flew from the smoke, most with Kakashi's belt as a target. If they connect with me, he can draw first blood there down and lean dried avoiding shurikens, when wind chakra from them created elongations for the blades. 
and one of these chakra blades cut wires with the bells. Got them. Naruto burst from his smokescreen, trying to catch falling bells. Shit. I underestimated him. Kakashi did first thing that came to his mind to save bells from advancing Genin. He kawaramied with them. Naruto, who already thought he had his bell, tripped over Kakashi. Silver-haired Jounin caught bells and spun around, his hands doing false hand signs, finishing with tiger seal. Kanoha's secret to jutsu art. Senen Garashi. Jounin's fingers connected with Naruto's ass. Next moment blonde Jenin turned into stone dust, creating another smoke screen. Stone clone. Shit. Years on battlefield allowed Kakashi to react on time to block attack from the behind. Kakashi moved with a speed that clearly said that he wasn't Jounin for nothing, and his knee connected with Naruto's stomach. This Naruto poofed out of existence as a cloud of smoke. Shadow clone. Naruto is a way too strong for dead last Jinan. Guitin. Repishu. Wind Jutsu in a form of hand hit ground in front of Kakashi, rising clouds of dust. On his reflexes Kakashi blocked incoming attack and threw Naruto backwards. Jounin charged and delivered punch to Naruto's chest, sending him into the nearest tree. Before Naruto rose back to his feet, Kakashi knocked him unconscious. Then Kakashi tied him to the tree. Okay one is temporary down, let's find two other then silver-haired Jounin disappeared from the clearing via Shunshin. Loser. I can do better. Thought Sasuke, who was watching this short fight from his hiding spot. Though that wind jutsu pretty strong. I need to learn it. Ichiha left his spot to find Kakashi and take a bell from him. If that idiot can fight like this, what my Sasuke-sama can do. Thought Sakura, who also saw Naruto fighting Kakashi. Naruto regained conscious from the loud scream that echoed through the forest on the training ground. As he was tied to the tree, he couldn't do anything himself. Without doing any hand signs Naruto summoned stone clone that untied him, before returning back to the ground where it rose from. Now free, blonde Jenin ran towards the place from where a scream came from. There he found unconscious Akura lying in the middle of small clearing. It looked like she was knocked out with some type of Jinjutsu. Naruto lugged her to the trees and sent small impulse of his chakra to her to disrupt illusion. Sakura opened her eyes, saw Naruto and screamed again. She hit blonde with all her might, sending him into the tree on the opposite side of the clearing. Why did you do that? Why did you kill Sasuke-sama? She yelled, advancing to Naruto. What are you talking about? Naruto could not understand what was going on. I never saw him since this test started. Liar. Sakura continued advancing, preparing to turn Naruto into bloody pulp. Don't lie to me. You killed him so that you'll have his bell. Deciding that the best Sakura was unconscious Sakura, Naruto moved faster than she thought he could and knocked her unconscious. Twenty minutes after Naruto found Kakashi again. This time Jounin had his orange book in front of his face. Both bells were still with him. Seeing that Naruto found him, Kakashi put his book into the pouch and got ready for attack. Oden. Doryuden. Naruto, after doing Hadassings, slammed his hands to the ground and large mud made dragon head rose. It opened mouth and began shooting mud projectiles to Kakashi, who did everything to avoid being hit, at the same time advancing towards Naruto. This time Blonde was able to block Jounin's punch, but his jutsu was disrupted and he himself flew into the tree. You know, you are too active you need some rest. Kakashi threw something and in the next second Naruto was tied to the tree with wire. Metal wire. And lightning that started in Kakashi's free hand made Naruto nervous. If any of us can't get that damn bell on his own, then we must attack together or what? Jounin nodded. Rain. Heheru. Kakashi sent electric current through wire and knocked Naruto unconscious again. Naruto regained conscious only to her alarm clock ringing. Their time was over. He slowly walked towards the clearing they started this test from. He was the last one to enter clearing. So he wasn't killed by Sakura on spot but still was throwing dark glares at him. Kakashi appeared in front of three genins in a whirl of wind and leaves. Seeing as none of you could get one of these bells, Jounin pointed to two bells on his belt. You all fail this test. He saw three genins hung their heads. But I'm in a good mood today, so you'll have another chance, but rules will be tougher. Now you'll 30 minutes to get some rest. Naruto will be tied cause he was tied to the trees twice today. Kakashi smiled with his visible eye. After he tied Naruto to the tree, he gave bentos to Sasuke and Sakura. You two can eat. But don't give anything to Naruto or don't free him or you want another chance to get the bell. With this silver hair down and disappeared via Shushin. Sasuke-sama could touch bells, idiot could cut them from Kakashi's belt. So if they work together, they'll have bells for Sasuke-sama and me. And idiot will go the place where he must be academy. Sakura thought. But if Naruto is hungry, he will be useless. If I make those two to distract Kakashi, I'll get both bells for myself and will be free from the dead weight. But to do so, those two must be in their top form, so replete. Sasuke thought. Boy, Naruto, want some? 
Sakura asked, pointing with chopsticks to her bento. No, Sakura, use mine. Sasuke moved his bento near Sakura's. But can't eat on my own. I'm tied to the tree, remember? Naruto said. I will not feed you. Sakura yelled. And at least untie me. Naruto yelled back. Sakura thought for a second, remembering Jounin's words, but decided that she may be lucky and he won't see her acting, so she took kunai from her pouch and was ready to cut wire when Kakashi appeared out of nowhere. He looged very angry. At the same time sun disappeared in heavy clouds. You didn't listen to me and violated my rules. Your last words. To get those bells one man isn't enough. Sasuke said. Yes, we must work together. Sakura added. Is that it? All three genins nodded. Then I have only one thing to say you pass. Clouds disappeared and Kakashi's face returned its usual neutral expression. What? Why? Sakura asked. The no has young sage. Chapter 3. First meeting and Nami no Kuni. Next day there was first training of Team 7. It should have started at 8 in the morning, but it was already almost 10, and neither Naruto nor Kakashi had appeared yet, which annoyed Sakura greatly. Sasuke, as usually, was brooding and seemed not to care about anything in the world, except for his revenge minutes were dragging on too slowly for pink-haired Kinoichi's likes finally Naruto appeared. But he looked different than yesterday. His khaki jacket remained, but other clothes looked like standard Chuanin or Jounin attire minus best. Lon boy had kunai holster on each leg and pouch on his hip. You're late. Sakura yelled. And what is that? Are you trying to look cooler than Sasuke-sama? A Kakashi-sensei is always late he probably won't show himself in next 20 minutes, so don't flare up. Naruto began. And what's with new looks, idiot Naruto? Don't even try to impress me. Pink-haired girl continued yelling. Just thought that if I'm officially genin now, I need new clothes. And why would I try to impress you? Naruto replied. What did you say, dead last? They could hear Sasuke's when those two will shut up. But Sakura ignored it and tried to punch Naruto, but Blonde dodged it quite easily. Sakura attempted to hit him again, but silver-haired Jounin chose this moment to appear at training ground. Yo. Kakashi greeted. Time for some training. For next two months Team 7 was training under Kakashi, in teamwork mostly with some stamina and strength building. Also they had done around 30 missions, D-rank, which were more like damn chores that anybody could do. Well, at least those missions gave money income. Team 7 entered briefing hall at Hokage Tower, as they were going to take another mission. Hokage Zama. Kakashi spoke. Team 7 is their request's mission. Let's see what we have for you old man replied, looking through some scrolls. Oh, here we are. You can catch Torak at Hokage side. For the fifth time or you can help repairing roofs in the market district or dig the well. Hokage J Sama, but can't we have something more serious? Naruto asked. Their missions aren't serious and don't help us to progress. Naruto, you are just fresh out of Academy Genin, those missions are just for you. Said Aruka, who was also present there. Aruka, I know that you don't want them to do anything risky, but they aren't your students anymore, Suratobi said. What will you say, Kakashi, is your team ready for C-rank mission? Silver-haired Jounin thought for several seconds. I think, they are ready. And Sasuke, Sakura, do you want to take C-rank mission? Hokage asked. I will take it. This will make me one step closer to Sasuke began. Okay, okay, what about you, Sakura? Kinoichi of Team 7 herself was very afraid of taking C-rank mission, but her Sasuke-sama was taking it, so she should too. I'm in. She stated weakly. So, how about escort mission? Client asks for protection from bandits on his way to the Land of Waves. Suratobi asked. We will take it. Kakashi stated. Then send client in. Hokage ordered. Another doors to briefing hall opened and man entered. He was in his fifties and was dressed in cargo pants, pretty old undershirt, his jacket was tied on his waist. Man had sake bottle in his hand and was obviously drunk. And these brats are going to protect me those pink-haired girl who is ready to wet herself at the sight of enemy, ducted haired boy who tries to look cooler than he is, and blonde punk who looks less intelligent than my bottle. I paid for shinobi, not these brats. Man ranted. After he finished, Kakashi had to restrain Sasuke and Naruto Sakura from tearing him into shreds. Hokage sighed. Azuna-san, it's not recommended to insult those who are going to protect you, you know. And I assure you that they are capable of completing mission you gave them. Also they have one of strongest jounins of the village as their sensei. Fine, whatever. Man, now identified as Tazuna, said. Remember brats, you are protecting me, Tazuna's super bridge builder. Okay, team, meet me and Tazuna-san at Southern Gate in three hours. Take everything you'll need for a two-week-long mission. Kakashi said. Three hours later everyone was standing in front of southern gates. Even Kakashi was there on time. 
Sasuke and Sakura, like Kakashi and Tasuna, had big backpacks with them, but Naruto didn't. Oh, why haven't you taken anything for the mission? Ichiha asked. You know, no one will share anything with you. I have all that I need. Naruto replied. Sasu countered with HN. Whatever. Okay, we'll use Rhombus formation. Sasuke front, Sakura right, Naruto left, I'll the rear one. Kakashi said. Jennings nodded and took their positions. Their first C-rank mission started. First day was completely, other than some arguing between three Jennings, eventless. Group moved extremely slowly, by ninja standards, as their client, Tazuna, was civilian and couldn't keep up with them if they started running, the only interesting thing that happened during night camp was the fact that Naruto really had all he needed sealed in a scroll. But churned raised eyebrow from silver-haired Jounin, show off. From Sakura and teach me that. From Sasuke, which blonde refused. Next day also started eventless, but around noon Naruto sensed something. They entered area where nature itself seemed to be alerted. Blonde reached for his sage mode and immediately sensed two chakra signature in approximately 50 meters in front of them. But they looked like puddle of water. Ambush. Naruto looked at Kakashi and man nodded. He too saw it. But Sasuke or Sakura seemed oblivious to it. When group passed strange puddle, those two in the ambush decided to strike. Two cloaked figures of Kirichuan and missing nins, demon brothers, rose from the puddle and attacked. They wrapped the chain, connected to their gauntlets, around Kakashi and tore him into shreds. Naruto sensed his sensei performing Kawarimi one moment before he was killed, so he wasn't afraid as much as Sasuke was. Sakura and Tazuna were in state of pure horror. One down, four to go. Chuanins went after Naruto and Sasuke. Ichiha dodged gauntlet slash and tore chain from it, he spun and delivered blow to his opponent's stomach at the same time performing hand seals. His blow was parried, but Demon Brother could do nothing to prevent next move of Sasuke. Pain. Kakaku. Even if Fireball wasn't done at its full power, Kirichuanin was now out of fight. Naruto on his side blocked enemy's attack with kunai and delivered kick to Demon Brother's chest. Chuanin was unlucky and was thrown into the tree, where he lost consciousness. Good work, Naruto, Sasuke. Kakashi appeared on the road. But, Sensei Sakura still thought that Kakashi was killed in the beginning of this short fight, silver-haired Jounin answered to her with one word. Kawarimi. Then he looked at Tazuna, who visibly paled. Interesting those were after you, it seems, care to explain. Bridge Builder paled even more, but explained situation. Wave Country was very poor because of Gato's monopoly, and Great Bridge Tazuna was building was the only chance to save country, but Gato hired thugs, samurai and even missing nins, to stop Tazua from completing the bridge. After self-proclaimed Super Bridge Builder finished his story, Kakashi spoke. This will be B or even A rank mission. We should return and switch teams. But, Kakashi Sensei, if we abandon this mission, it will give us nothing, I say we continue. Sasuke said. Sakura only nodded, looking at her crush. Naruto just shrugged. Are you sure? Silverhaired Jounin asked. All three Jenins nodded. Looks like you're lucky, Tazuna. But once we complete this mission and Wave is back on its feet, you are paying us the difference between S and C rank missions. Or we are turning back to Kanoha. Bridge Builder nodded. You'll be paid. So group continued its way to Wave Country. Two next days were again eventless. Now it was early evening, and Kakashi decided to set up a camp. Naruto volunteered to bring some water from nearby river. Blonde boy ran between big trees, and when he was almost on the bank, after running around another tree, he spotted blonde girl there, obviously Shinobi. Naruto tried to stop, but tripped over one of the roots. At the same time girl turned to him, so they both ended in the river, their lips almost connected. Both teens blushed and jumped apart, falling into their battle stances. Nari chan I can sense can't need be there came from Kaiubi. Naruto studied the girl. She was 16 or so years old and was half head taller than he was. Her frame was tender and her skin was tanned a bit. Girl had long, made into braid, blonde hair. She had hidden cloud hideate on her forehead. She wore a simple purple t-shirt and pants Naruto switched his attention to Kumo Kinoichi's eyes. They were brown with some green and had a bit slitted pupil. And there was ocean of pain and loneliness behind them. Those eyes Naruto dropped his hands. I will not fight the one like me. Girl looked at him with confusion, not lowering her guards. What are you talking about, brat? She hissed. You know what I'm talking about. So which one? Blonde boy asked. Kumo Kinoichi still seemed not to understand him. Okay, I have Kaiubi Nitaian. And she says that you have Nibi. Girl's eyes widened. You are too. Naruto nodded. Even if I hate this word with passion, it describes us better than anything we are Jinchuriki. Kumo Kinoichi forgot that second ago she was ready to kill this boy and came close to him, touching his cheek with her fingers, like not believing that he was real. Still, you seem to be a bit different. Maybe. 
I spent only last year with humans maybe, I'm really a bit different, but, I have pretty good idea what must you have gone through, I want to be friends with you, those like us need somebody who can understand Naruto replied. Gurla nodded. Of course, I'm Yujito Nai of the Hidden Cloud. Naruto Uzumaki from the Hidden Leaf. They just stood there for a minute when something hit blonde boy sorry, but I need to return to my team. Yujito nodded and leaped away. Goodbye, Naruto she said before disappearing in the forest. I Naruto replied. Then here and through four hand seals. Fuitin. Sabaku no Kays. Hot winds blew all around him, drying him from his fall into the river. When Jutsu finished its work, Naruto filled mess tin and went back to the camp. There he was greeted by annoyed Sakura. Where have you been, idiot? She yelled. Just met nymph at the river Naruto replied, before starting to cook dinner everyone. Three days later group found themselves on board of small boat, sailing in the dense fog towards the wave country mainland. On their right there was colossal structure of the half-built bridge they were sailing in complete silence, not to alert any of Gato men who could be near. Finally, boat hit the ground. Okay, I will not sail any further. Said boat owner and captain. Well, thank you. Tazuna said, leaving boat. Team 7 was already waiting for their client there. Then they took off for the last part of their trip to the village where Tazuna's house was. They were walking along the road for more than two hours and were near small lake when Naruto again felt that nature was alerted. He heard something moving in the bushes and threw shuriken there. Second later terrified white rabbit emerged from the bush. Seeing this, Sakura immediately shouted at blonde shinobi. What the hell are you doing? Why did you have to scare that poor animal? And what white rabbit is doing here in summertime? Silverhaired Jounin spoke. It should have been used for replacement. Suddenly Naruto felt something coming from the trees. Everybody down. One moment before Kakashi he shouted. Next second huge sword flew where heads of group were and implanted itself into the tree, almost cutting it in two. Dark-haired man in blue pants appeared on the sword. Lower part of his face was hidden under bandages and he wore slashed Karigakur Hidi 8. MMM, copycat Kakashi no wonder demon brothers lost man spoke. Mamachi's abusa, demon of the bloody mist Kakashi said. Team, guard client, he is out of your league. Kanoha Jounin and moved his hideate up, revealing his left eye. Oh, great Kakashi remembers who I am. And he will use Sharingan against me. What honor. Zabuza laughed. Both Sakura and, especially, Sasuke wondered where did their sensei got that eye from. Naruto knew that story from Toads, but decided to keep it to himself. Brats, don't worry, when I deal with your sensei, I'll kill old man and you too. Kiri Missing Nin said, unleashing strong killing intent. Kakashi paired him with his own, and Tazuna along with Sasuke and Sakura found it much harder to breath from fear, though Naruto seemed to be unaffected. Don't be afraid, I'll protect you all with my life if needed. Kakashi assured lying his hand on Sasuke's shoulder to calm him down. Zabuza only laughed and jumped to the water before performing Kurigakur no Jutsu covering whole area with thick mist. Jennings immediately took triangular formation around Tazuna to protect him. Eight choices it seemed that mist itself was speaking Naruto stood there completely still collecting nature's energy for his sage mode. Liver lung spine clavicle vein neck vein brain kidneys heart which one should I choose? Finally activating sage mode, Naruto felt Zabuza, or at least his clone, judging by chakra amount, between him, Sasuke and Tazuna, ready to cut all three of them in two. And he would be the first one to be hit by that sword Zabuza's clone began its attack. Naruto tried to block sword swing with his kunai, but failed as sword cut his weapon and made inch deep wound on his chest appear. What the hell? Zabuza's clone was shocked. It felt like blonde's body was made of stone, not flesh, though it couldn't be Iwabush and Naruto was there, and his wound was bleeding Naruto using clone shock delivered sage powered hit to its abdominal, making it dissipate into the water, wound on blonde's chest started healing at inhuman rate. Naruto concentrated hard, sensing everything around. There were two more Mizubushans of Zabuza ready to attack. Real Zabuza was currently busy fighting with Kakashi Sensei. Naruto also sensed someone hiding in the forest and watching this fight. Duotin. Sabaku no case. With sage powers Justu was 30 or so times stronger, blowing mist off from whole clearing and lake. Using moment mist disappearance as a distraction, Naruto turned off sage mode, no one should know about it yet. Now without their cover, Zabuza clones rushed forward, having two male genins as prime targets. Sasuke saw attack coming and ducked, blade missing by mere centimeters. Zabuza's clone did another swing, and this time Sasuke lost lock from his head. Shit. I need more power to oppose him. Sasuke ducked from another attack, barely seeing it. I need more power. And then something happened. His vision became clearer and everything around began to move slower. Now he could predict Zabuza's clone's moves. 
having no time to congratulate himself on activating his Dejutsu, Sasuke blocked yet another swing on enormous blade with chakra enforced kunai at the same time implanting another blade of his into clone's gut. Clone smirked and punched Sasuke, sending team flying. Even before Ichiha boy stopped skidding, Zabuza was ready to cut him in two, but was stopped, courtesy of Kakashi's shuriken in the back of its head. Naruto had no easy time too. Without his sage mode he was no match even for clone of that Kiri missing nin Zabuza, all that blonde boy could do dodge wild swings and try to think of any plan to kill that annoying Mizubushins. Finally Naruto found opening as clone was distracted for a second by its brother's death. Using that opening Naruto threw four wind chakra charged shurikens at clone's neck, destroying it. When Kakashi saved Sasuke, Zabuza hit him, sending him to the nearby lake. Silver-haired Jounin thought about hiding in the water to catch his breath, but understood his mistake as soon as he felt that water was denser than it normally should be. Tsuru no Jutsu. X Kirinin caught Kakashi in the water sphere. This prison may be made of water, but it is harder than steel one. Zabuza told, while creating single Mizubushin with one-handed hand seals. Take Tazuna and run. Kakashi said to his students. No. We don't abandon our comrades. Narita yelled, summoning four Iwabushins to fight Zabuza's clone. Sasuke, do any fire jutsu on lake. Zabuza is out of range. Ichiha shouted back. Thus do it, I have a plan how to save Kakashi-sensei. Blonde replied. Sasuke nodded. Pain. Dikaku. Fireball hit water, creating wall of steam between Zabuza and Jennings. And what is your plan, dope? Page Busan. After creating three shadow clones, Naruto turned two of them into kunais and gave weapons to the third. Doten. Doryuden. Mud Dragon provided enough distraction so that kunai clones could be thrown at real Zabuza without any problem, but at the last second Kiri missing Nin ducked and both kunai missed him. You missed Dobe. Sasuke yelled. No. Both kunai turned back into clones and hit Zabuza on his head, making him break contact with Water Prison, which was holding Kakashi. And epic battle between two Jounins began. At first Sasuke tried to copy water jutsu they were using with his finally activated Sharingan, but soon felt his chakra reserves drained and had to deactivate his dejutsu finally Kakashi used grand waterfall jutsu and severely wounded Zabuza. But before silver-haired Jounin could kill his opponent, two senbin needles hit Zabuza's neck. Kakashi came close to swordsman's body and checked pulse and found none. But before he could say anything, Kiri Hunter Nin appeared near body and grabbed it. Thank you, Kanoha Ninja, for helping to kill this man. I was pursuing him for several weeks. Now I'll destroy his body. With that mysterious ninja, who sounded to be around 17, disappeared with Zabuza's body via Shunshin. Kakashi, seeing that there was no peril for his team and their client there, allowed himself to pass from chakra exhaustion. Kanoha's Young Sage. Chapter 3. First Meeting and Nami no Kuni. Part 2. When Team 7 and Tazuna finally reached Bridge Builder's house, they were greeted by his daughter, Tsunami. After quick and in time made dinner, all three genins almost immediately dropped off to sleep in the rooms they were settled in next morning, they summoned by Kakashi. Man was still looking pretty bad from his chakra exhaustion. But what he said to them was much worse. I'm afraid, Zabuza is still alive. Sakura and Sasu looked thunderstruck. Naruto was a bit calmer, but only a bit. The but how, sensei. He was hit on his neck. No one can survive something like that. Pink-haired Kinoichi finally blurted out. You remember what was Abusa hit with? Silver haired Jounin asked. Senban needles. Naruto said. Yes. If aimed correctly, these needles can put one in near death state. But to recover from that, one will need at least one week of time. Kakashi sat on his futon. We have to get stronger in this week. Anbu member appeared in Suratobi's office. Okajama, we were finally able to get a trace of the one who spread rumors about Kaiubi in the village. It was done by one of Danzo's men. Operative said. Anything that could be used against Danzo for fomentation of disturbance? Old man asked. Unfortunately, only several eyewitnesses. Do bad Hokage side. Continue investigation, please. As you wish, Hokage Sama. Anbu disappeared from Saratobi's office via Shunshin. So, what are you going to teach us, Sensei? Sakura asked. All three Genins and their Sensei were standing in the clearing of the nearby forest. Though Kakashi was using crutches, as he was still weak from his battle with Zabuza. I'm going to teach you tree climbing. What kind of training is that? Sakura shouted. Well, listen until the end. In this exercise you will climb a tree without using your hands. Silver-haired Jounin finished. How is that possible? Team 7's Kanoichi asked. Like this, Sensei. Naruto asked, while jumping between two trees, till he reached Thick Branch, where he stopped and was now standing head over heels on it. Two other Genins as well as Kakashi were shocked, though because of different reasons. 
Sakura and Sasuke because they thought this was impossible while their sensei because Naruto already had obtained this skill. Oh, Naruto, you already know tree climbing. Why don't you teach it to your teammates then? Kakashi heard Blonde muttering something like lazy sensei under his breath, but ignored. Young Jinchuriki jumped down from the branch and landed near Sakura and Sasuke. I still don't see how this will help us become stronger. Oh, where do you know how to do this from? Pink-haired Kinoichi and Achiha Avenger ask almost at the same time. Sakura, this training has two points. First. It will allow you to use any solid surface as a pivot. And second. This will increase your chakra control, and better chakra control means less chakra usage for Jutsus, while the Jutsus may become more effective. Naruto explained. And Sasuke, my sensei taught it to me when I was six or so seeing as brooding boy wanted to demand something, Blonde Jinchuriki continued. He won't teach you. Your name is nothing for him. And I was trained only because it was my father's last wish. My father and sensei were comrades and good friends then Naruto remembered one more thing. He saw Sasuke's activated dejutsu during that fight with Zabuza. And forget about using your Sharingan eyes. Even if your mind will know what to do, your body won't be able to do that. You need to learn this through hard work. Seeing angered Sasuke, Naruto decided to do one last blow to other boy's pride. I also have a training to do. I leave a clone to teach you. But if you destroy it before it explains you how to do tree climbing, you'll have to figure that on your own. Blonde summoned single cage Busan and then walked away to another clearing. Kakashi who watched his subordinates interact only sighed and shook his head. He will never understand these kids. In the evening Team 7 was finally able to meet with the last inhabitant of Tazuna's house bridge builder's grandson Inari. That seven years old boy ran into dining room when Kakashi and trio of his students, along with Tsunami and Tazuna were having dinner. Oh, Inari-kun, meet great ninjas who protected me. Old man called. They are going to die. Boy stated, looking at four shinobi in the room. And why is that? Naruto yelled back. Kakashi was too into reading his precious orange book to answer. Sasuke too remained quiet as he was thinking about his revenge, and Sakura was too shocked by the statement. No one can oppose Gato. Was Inari's reply. Yeah, and Sasuke over there can laugh. Tazuna and Kakashi chuckled, while Lichiha boy decided that Naruto wasn't worthy of his reaction this time. What was that for? Blonde boy was rubbing bump on his head from Sakura's hit. Don't insult Sasuke-sama. Pink-haired Kinoichi yelled at her blonde teammate. Oh, shut up. Naruto responded. If you want to live, run away. Inari said, before running away from the room. What's with him? Kanoha's Jinchuriki asked. Tazuna sighed. Well it is a long story and he told about village's Hirokaiza, who became father figure to Inari. And about what Gato did to that man. I'll go talk with him. Naruto stated after Tazuna finished telling the story. Without waiting for others to say anything, he went out of the room and reached for his sage mode. He could sense that boy now. He was on the second floor in one of the small rooms. Naruto turned off sage mode and marched to where Inari was. He opened door to the boy's room and saw him crying. Well Naruto suddenly felt very uncomfortable. Tazuna-san told us your story and. You know nothing. You, ninjas, know nothing about hardships of life. Inari shouted through his cries. But succeeded only in angering blonde Jinchuriki. Naruto in a blink of an eye was in front of younger boy, pinning him to the wall. So I know nothing. Let me tell you part of my story. Naruto took a deep breath to calm down and let Inari free. Unlike you, I have no real family. Hell, I can count with my fingers those from Konoha who don't hate me simply for who I am. And this is not all. I spent in Konoha only one year. And there were at least 59 assassination attempts, they tried to kill me 59 times. And that are only those attempts that I know about. Inari looked at Naruto not really believing an older boy's story. And tell you what, I too didn't have harshest life. Naruto paused. Tazuna said you don't believe in heroes anymore. Well, if everyone will sit and cry like you do, there won't be any heroes. One isn't born as a hero. One can only become a hero. But Inari tried to say something, but Naruto didn't let him. What but? Nothing will happen if one do something. Think about it. And Naruto left the room. Young Jinchuriki still felt anger boiling in him, so he decided to blow some steam with training, and it didn't matter that it was 9 in the evening already. Next morning dark-haired boy in girlish pink kimono was walking through the forest, collecting herbs, when he entered clearing that looked like his master trained in kinjutsu there. Many thicker trees had deep cuts on their trunks, while thinner ones were just cut into two. Earth too had many gashes. Boy spotted herbs he was looking for, dismissing thoughts about what happened here for a while. He collected what he needed and was about to leave. He turned around and saw someone. Twelve or so years old blonde boy in dark blue pants and sweater and khaki jacket. Sleeping, leaning against one of thicker trees. 
ninja of Kanahagakur, judging by his hideous. Hey. Dark-haired boy shook sleeping blonde. You shouldn't sleep on the ground. Blonde boy yawned and opened his eyes. Oh, it's morning already. Guess, I trained a little too much yesterday blonde yawned again. And then it hit him that he wasn't alone in the clearing. Hey, who are you? I'm just collecting herbs so I can heal my precious person so you trained and I can see your ninja. But what are you fighting for? Herbalist boy asked. I was raised in close contact with nature and believe that people should live in peace. My goal is to bring peace to everyone. Or at least to those close to me, those I care about. So you too have a precious person. Only one who does something to his precious person will do it in the best way. So you will be truly strong only when you fight for those you care about. Yeah. Blonde Shinobi agreed. By the way, I'm Haku. Naruto Uzumaki. Sorry, but I have to go to prepare medicine. Haku said, going away from Naruto. By the way, aren't you Hunter Nin who took Sabuza's body? Blonde suddenly asked. Haku didn't show fear that struck him with other boys' question, just shock, but he was sweating on the inside. Is he a sensor type? Or was it just a blind guess? No. He lied. Good. You just look like that Zabuza's man I and my team saw before. This means our enemy isn't this close to us and no one is in danger right now. Naruto explained. If only you knew if circumstances were different, I'm sure we could become good friends, Naruto Uzumaki. Bye. And Haku left the clearing. Naruto was bored. Absolutely nothing happened in past four days, and Zabuza was expected to appear only on the day after tomorrow, so now he was guarding Tazuna, and workers on the bridge alone Sasuke and Sakura had some more training with Kakashi. Naruto was meditating on the border of Sage Mode so he could feel everything around him. Suddenly he felt small creature approaching the bridge. That creature was moving on the water surface, which meant that it was one of ninja's summons. Creature came closer and Naruto could finally determine what it was. Lizard. And from what Bunta told him, Hidden Cloud used lizards to deliver messages. And this one clearly had him as its target. Naruto opened his eyes and after several seconds saw a brown lizard with small, for human, scroll on its back. Scroll had for word written in it the way he could see them. From 2 to 9. So you wanted something from me, Yujido? Naruto asked question to no one. Still he made his cage busan to open the scroll in case it was a trap. But luckily it wasn't, scroll contained only a message normal girl would send to normal boy, as much as Jinchuriki could be counted as normal lizard all the time was watching Naruto. And you're waiting for me to compose reply, so you can deliver to Yujido. He asked small reptilian. To his surprise, lizard nodded. Well okay. Blonde took brush and ink pot from him pouch and quickly replied to his nymph's message. He rolled the scroll and gave it to the lizard. Deliver this to Yujido Nai and be safe. Lizard nodded and craped away. It was dawn of the day when, how Kakashi thought, Zabuza would strike. Kakashi sat on the chair at the table, yawning, but already reading his orange book. With his visible eye he looked at three younger ninjas. Okay, team, Naruto, you'll guard Tazuna's house. Sasuke and Sakura, you'll come with me and protect people on the bridge. All three genins nodded after the breakfast bridge builder, along with Jounin and two genins left, so Naruto was left alone with Tsunami and Inari, and it looked like Kakashi's prediction was right. Attack on Tazuna's house, in the form of two samurai, didn't keep them waiting. Naruto defeated those two with only a pair of scratches on his arms, which were immediately taken care of, and decided to go to the bridge in case his team needed help. But he left dozen of his shadow clones, so Tazuna's house could be protected. For sure it wasn't Sasuke's day. When they arrived to the bridge, all workers were knocked unconscious and there was thick mist. Then, just as silver-haired Jounin predicted, Zabuza appeared out of that mist. But this time Kiri Missing Nin was accompanied by the same Hunter Nin boy who took his body away during their previous battle. Sasuke defeated Zabuza's water clones easily, but that Hunter Nin became real problem. He was fast, very fast, and even with his Sharingan Sasuke had problems following his opponent's movements, and now last at Chiha of Kanahagakur, no Sato was lying down inside Dome of Ice Mirrors, turned into pincushion for Senbans. Kakashi was busy fighting Zabuza, so he couldn't help him. And then Sasuke suddenly saw someone approaching. Naruto. When blonde boy was close enough, Sasuke did the only thing he could think of to save his ass. Power Emmy. In a poof of smoke, they exchanged their position, so it was Naruto who was trapped inside Ice Dome now. Oh, I got new enemy. Hunter Nin asked no one particular when blonde leaf ninja appeared in his dome. He reached for more needles and began throwing them at Naruto. And blonde Jinchuriki in a matter of minutes got hit with Senbans and was paralyzed. And you aren't as fast as previous one. I win. Actually no. Naruto replied, beginning to gather natural energy. Need my help? Voice in his head asked. But be sure, I want my payment for that. 
thank you, but I'll be okay on my own this time, though you want your payment very much, maybe I could give it to you just for fun. Naruto felt Kai would be nodding eagerly. Later, Ni Tian, I have a fight right now. Vixen pouted but nodded. You just helped me. With hisses of pain, Lon Ninja stood up. Now there were dark red outlinings around his now amber eyes. And there was extremely strong aura of power around boy. Hunter Nin threw more senbens at his opponent, but they just ricocheted like blonde skin was turned into stone. What the hell? Hunter Nin asked. Instead of giving him reply, Naruto ran through hand seals. Odin. Dahari. Stone spikes rose from the bridge, crashing most of ice mirrors and breaking the jutsu, so the rest disappeared on their own. Naruto made spikes disappear and then walked up to the Hunter Nin, now lying on the ground with stab wound on his left shoulder. I know, you could admire my teammate shinobi careers or even kill us easily, why just immobilize? Even through mask Naruto saw his shock. I don't like killing. Then why are you with Zabuza? He is my master and the only reason I'm still alive. Hunter Nin answered. He is my precious person. You? Pain? Gikaku. Naruto was able to jump out of the way of fireball. Haku wasn't that lucky. And now there was only his smoking corpse. Naruto turned to Sasuke only to see dark-haired boy laughing maniacally. You saw that. You saw that, dear brother. One day I'll do same thing to you. Somewhere else on the bridge, Kakashi was finally able to immobilize Zabuza with the help of Nin Dogs. And now, Zabuza, this is your end. Rikiri. Lightning started in Kanoha Shinobi left arm. When Jutsu was ready, Kakashi louched himself forward, intent to pierce Kiri missing Nin's heart. Suddenly both of them saw explosion of fire where Sasuke and Haku should be fighting. Kakashi just slowed a bit, while Zabuza, hit by the loss of his weapon comrade No, son, jerked and freed his sword and threw it at summoning scroll Kakashi left unguarded. And Rikiri instead of killing him just severed his left arm. Dogs that held Zabuza disappeared in the puffs of smoke. Suddenly they heard applause. Kakashi, Kakashi, I must thank you and your brats for making my work easier, it's short man in glasses in front of army of thugs, who was speaking. Edo, what do you mean? Zabuza asked. You know, you ninja are far too expensive to hire for my likes. So you weren't going to pay us in the end? Of course not. I was going to kill you and collect bounty on your head. And these Kanoha ninjas just made first part much easier. Gato answered. Bakashi, looks like we aren't enemies anymore. Silver-haired Jounin nodded, Wheel as Abusa took his sword with his right and only hand. I'll die anyway from blood loss, but you, Gato, are going to join me on the way to the hell. Kiri missing Nin launched himself forward, cutting thugs that became live shield in front of Gato into pieces thugs could do nothing to stop Demon of the Mist, and soon enough Zabuza, with several swords sticking out of his body, was in front of trembling Gato. Be you a real demon. Man cried. The one who will torture you forever. And Zabuza brought his sword down, cleaving Gato into two halves. Thugs were so afraid of him now, that cleared his way, when he began walking. Demon of the Mist reached Kanoha Jounin and fell down, unable to move anymore. The rest is yours, Kakashi. I just wish I could see Haku one more time those were his last words. There was silence. Then one of thugs shouted. Edo is dead and no one will pay us. Let's go to the village and take everything valuable. Loud yell of agreement ran through the mass half armed men. Kakashi sensei, can you help me? Asked Naruto, who lied down unconscious Asuke. He is just knocked out. Blonde ignored Sakura's yell Sasuke-sama and summoned two dozens of stone clones. Kakashi helped his student with dozen of shadow clones. But thugs still decided to attack. Only to stop when an arrow pierced leg of one of men. You wanted to rob our village. How about going through us first? One man yelled. Ninjas turned to see half of the village, armed with scythes, hammers, spades, knives, frying pans and an Ari with a crossbow in the front row. Yes. Go away and never return to the wave. Naruto ran through hand seals. Doton. Doryuden. Large mud dragon rose from the bridge, and thugs began running for their lives. When everyone was safe, Naruto came up to Inari. I see, you stopped crying. Good work, little hero. Week later bridge was finished and Team 7 was leaving. Whole village was seeing them home. When four shinobi became dots on the horizon, someone asked. How will we name the bridge? What about Great Bridge of Hope? Another man suggested. Maybe Great Naruto Bridge then? Tazuna suggested jokingly, but reaction of crowd surprised him. Yeah. Why not? He gave us hope. He is the hero. People shouted. Then it will be great Naruto bridge. Let it bring luck and prosperity to the wave. Pino has young sage. Chapter 4. Not a safe waterfall. Two figures in dark blue cloaks with hoods were walking through night misty forest. One of the figures had big backpack with him. Both figures stopped when ninja patrol run in about 100 meters from of them. 
Luckily for figures, they weren't seen, so they continued walking towards their destination several minutes later they stopped at the muddy bank of the river. This place is good. Said figure with backpack, moonlight reflected from his round glasses. Stay on guard while I execute the plan. Hi. Second figure nodded, summoning two white blades from his sleeves. First figure put his backpack on the ground and opened it, revealing four big brown eggs. He did three hand seals and mud on the bank moved, creating something like a nest. But man in glasses moved all eggs into newly made nest grow strong, weapons of my master. Bring your wrath upon our enemies. Looks like we have guests. Said figure with blades. Um it's not even bad right now kill them, leave their bodies there and catch up with me. Glasses wearing man said. Our little friends with hatch soon. They'll need food. As you wish. Blade wielder readied himself for a short battle with patrol ninjas, as his companion escaped the area via shunshin. It was whole week since Team 7 returned from their A-ranked mission in the Wave Country. After three days of rest, Team began taking missions again. Simple D-ranks, as both Genins and their sensei were afraid to take another C-rank mission right now who knows, maybe they will run into another very strong missing nin, who will try to kill them. But things usually don't go the way you want. Bakashi, I'm sorry, but right now we don't have any other teams in the village for this mission. Old Hokage spoke. I need you to deliver message scroll to the hidden waterfall. This will be C-rank mission. Silverhaired Jounin nodded and took scroll Hokage gave him. I understand and will comply to your orders even if I don't like them. Team, get ready for a week-long C-rank mission. We are leaving in four hours. Jennings too weren't very happy with this mission, but could do nothing as this was Hokage's order, so, after they were dismissed from briefing, they went to their homes to pack for the mission. Team 7 was already traveling three days, and now were close hidden waterfall. It was said that this was the most hidden ninja village well, now second after reformed hidden sound, so if there will be no one to guide them, they might spend several extra hours, trying to find gates of Takigakura no Sado. Luckily for them, after they took another turn on the road, they saw a single shinobi with Taki Hideate waiting for them. That shinobi was a tomboy-looking girl of around 15-16 years old. She had tan skin, short tealish green hair with red flower in them over her right ear and red eyes. Girl was wearing white top, white arm warmers, short white miniskirt with just a little longer chainmail shorts under it, and dark grey shinobi sandals. Her hideate was placed just above her right elbow, and she had red backpack with X-forming straps that somehow accentuated her not-so-small breasts. Can you feel him too, Neru-chan? Blonde shinobi heard his knee tie and asking him. Yes. But I can't say which one Naruto replied with his thoughts. Chichibi no Kaku. He nodded. And there is something else in this area, but I don't understand what is it right now. Okay, I'll be cautious. Waterfall Kanoichi looked at each of Team 7 members, her eyes staying on Kakashi and, especially, on Naruto for much longer time than on Sasuke Sakura. Finally she spoke. Good afternoon. Taki Jounin bowed a little. I'm Fuu, special Jounin of Takigakura no Sado. I assume you have a message from Sandame Hokage sama. Kakashi nodded. Nice to meet you, Haddock san, and you students, by the way. Three Genins under said silver haired Jounin bowed their heads to Fuu while their team leader introduced them. Follow me, I lead you into the village. Hidden Waterfall Village, as its name suggested, was located in the enormous cave behind Waterfall, and because of that had good natural defenses. Cave itself had two natural entrances. One just behind Waterfall was used as a main entrance to the village, while another was leading somewhere into the forests was more like used only in case of emergency. Of course, there were some more artificially made entrances to the cave, and all were heavily guarded. After passing heavy armored gates, five ninjas found themselves in enormous, maybe half of Kanoha's territory big, cave. While there were no holes for sunlight to pass into the cave, it still was almost as brightly as outside there, as light was given by big blue crystals that stick out of the cave floor, walls and ceiling here and there. Surprisingly, there were not only buildings of Hidden Waterfall Village and those crystals there, there also grew bushes and even pretty big trees, Leaf Shinobi were in awe, as they have never seen anything like this, before they walked through well-planned and organized Shinobi Village, though it seemed that there were more Shinobi on duty than was needed when there was no war. Towards the complex of buildings surrounded by the ring of walls with the only gates. They walked through those gates and crossed small square before entering biggest building, the one where village leader worked guards there were tensed as if they were expecting some kind of attack at any time. And of course, not only Kakashi, but Team 7 Genins too, noticed this. What's going on, Fu-san? I never heard anything about attacks on your village, why so many guards? Silverhaired Jounin asked. Actually, we too are not sure what is going on. Three days ago one of our patrol teams didn't return. More, their bodies were never found, just some of their blood on the grass near the river. And there also was big hole, like attack was from under the ground. 
Since that time we lost five more men, including two civilians inside the village. Attacker was never seen, but whoever it is, he leaves tunnels in the ground. About 90 centimeters in diameter and very very long. Few answered. And attacker doesn't feel like human, more like some kind of subterranean beast. But even with the help of Shichibi, I can't find them Shinobi stopped in front of the village leader's door. Few told Team 7 to wait and entered office. She emerged from it minute later and said that only Kakashi can enter in order to deliver message, his genins had to wait. So Naruto, Sakura and Sasu took a seat on the small sofa, while Fu was leaning on the wall near Blanche and Shuriki. So Fu san you two finally asked Naruto, breaking almost minute-long silence. Girl nodded. Yeah. I'm seven. She responded and looked at Blonde silently asking him about his tenant. Nine. Naruto replied. You two, what are you talking about? Sakura asked, as she could not understand their conversation. About something we have in common. Blonde and Shuriki answered. Don't make me laugh, Baka. You can have nothing in common with her. Sakura reached behind Sasuke's head and hit Naruto. She is already special Jounin, she is very strong, something you'll never be. Naruto ignored his teammate, like Fu did it. Yeah, Fu, forget about that loser. You need someone from Elite. Like Ichiha Sasuke didn't notice hurt expression Sakura's face and was about to continue when alarm went on. Kasama. Not again. Fu almost yelled and sprinted towards the exit. Naruto jumped from the sofa and ran after her. What's going on? Is the village under attack? He asked, at the same time using small mirror to look back. The rest of his team, Kakashi included, were running after them, along with unknown man of about 50 years old in spruce brown clothes, Takigakura no Sato leader, Naruto presumed. Yeah. Another one of those attacks from under the ground. Few answered. Four minutes later six shinobi were standing in the center of small park near broken bench. There was some fresh blood and, of course, big hole in the ground. Fu pressed both her hands to the ground and sent chakra wave. Judging by the change of her emotions, she didn't find what she was looking for. Again too late. Attacker is outside my range. She said. Let me try. Maybe I'll be able to sense them. Naruto said. Baka, she is Jounin. You can't be better than she is even in your dreams. Sakura yelled, but was ignored by Fu. How far you can sense? Special Jounin of Hidden Waterfall asked. About kilometer and a half blonde Jenin answered. Fu nodded and Naruto sat in meditative pose. After five seconds red outlining appeared around his closed eyes, Naruto entered his sage mode and began searching for anything suspicious other than a wide network of underground tunnels. Then he found it, almost out of his range. It was creature. Relatively short and thick worm like something that was moving at a good speed through one of tunnels. And Naruto didn't like this creature he turned off his sage mode and opened his eyes. Found something. Few asked. Blonde and Churiki nodded. It's worm-like creature. About seven meters long and almost meter thick. It can move very fast under the ground. I'd say it can win a sprint against most genins. He paused. I was lucky, it went out of my range a second later I sensed it, and there is network of tunnels under and around the village, created by that monster. Anything else? Village leader asked. That monster was moving in the direction of the swamp four kilometers from here. I'd say that it might have some kind of nest there. Plus I'd say, judging by the number of tunnels, there is more than one monster. Naruto answered. Not good, not good to Kigakura no Sato leader's side. Thank you, Naruto-san. He turned to Kakashi. I'd like to borrow your student, Haddock-san. He is much better at sensing than any of my ninja, and he will provide great help in redeeming the village. It's a rank, bordering S rank mission and will be paid accordingly. You and your other students may stay at the hotel or join the hunt, if he is willing to help us, of course. I, I will help them. Naruto finally said. Kakashi nodded. Sasuke, Sakura, what do you want? Stay in the village or join the hunt? Silverhaired Jounin asked. I'll join. There is no way that the dope is somewhere better than I am. If he can do that, I can't too. Ichiha boy told his sensei, who just sighed at this. I, I don't want to be near those monsters. I'll stay at the hotel. Kinoichi of Team 7 said. Okay so few, Kakashi-san and two of his students will form four-man cell that will try to find and, if possible, kill those beasts. Village leader said. You can start the hunt immediately. He asked. All four ninja nodded. Then I'll summon other teams to provide your backup. Go. And the hunt started. Four shinobi arrived to the small field near the swamp where, as Naruto though, worms may have their nest. Blonde and Churiki sat on the ground and called forth his sage mode. His guess was correct and those monsters were there. Three were almost under them, 70 meters under the ground, and one more was in almost kilometer from their position in the forest. Three things there. One in about kilometer at four o'clock. Naruto reported. Is there someone with earth affinity? 
he asked then. I have it. Why? Fu answered. Kakashi and Sasuke remained silent. Good. Fu, you'll help me. I will need you to create hardest stone possible as the walls and the floor for the pit I'm about to create. Naruto explained. Kakashi sensei, try Kate narrate and attacks on monsters when you see them. Sasuke team, use you fire techniques. I'll try my Fuiten and Doten Jutsu arsenal against them. Why will I do as you say, dope? Sasuke said irately, his Sharingan activated, while Kakashi nodded, thinking about Naruto's plan. Good plan, Naruto. I approve. Sasuke, you will do what he says. It's an order. Okay Naruto sensed worms approaching them. They are coming. Ready. He put both his hands on the ground and Fu mirrored his actions. Doten. Kaisei. They yelled in unison. Twenty meters deep and hundred meters wide pit with stone walls appeared with three dirty brown creatures on the bottom. Worms which immediately tried to run from this pit but weren't very successful with penetrating its walls. Attack. Naruto yelled. Pain. Kakaku. Both Kakashi and Sasuke sent fireballs at beast. Fireballs successfully hit their targets, but when fire died down, worms were almost unharmed and already broke through stone walls, even enforced by few whose chakra ninjas saw only their tails. Shit. Taki special jown and hissed. These creatures have no eyes, means they use other senses to move around and attack. Hearing or smelling most probably, or they can sense heat. Silverhaired jown and noted. Also, they have very hard beak and their muscles are very strong, if that thing catches you, it won't be pretty. Jump. Naruto yelled. They are attacking. All four ninja jumped into the air. They saw worms appear where they stood second ago. One of the beasts opened its mouth, which apparently had three jaws with teeth like spikes, and sent three thick snake-like tongues after Kakashi. Naruto used this to send two kunai into its mouth. One with explosive tag, other with unfamiliar seal creatures tongue surprisingly had their own mouths and tried to bite Kakashi's leg, but Jounin cut them with Chidori, spraying yellowish-orange stinky liquid, before they could harm him. No one saw a smile on Sasuke's face as he copied the jutsu worm howled from pain, but before it could hide under the ground, Naruto activated seals. Monster trashed in agony as his internals were ripped by vacuum seal. And then was torn into pieces by explosive tag, covering the ground with its blood and flesh. Naruto felt his sage powers leave him. But even his normal sense range, 300 meters, would be enough for now. One down, three to go. Good work, Naruto. Fu congratulated, landing on the ground. But next moment her face changed into the one of pure fear. She flashed her hand seals. Doten. Tetsukawa. Her skin turned rusty gray and became very hard. Luckily, she finished her jutsu just in time as next moment Worm tried to swallow her, but she managed to keep its mouth from closing. Help me. Urkiri. Lightning started in Kakashi's hand. Silver-haired Jounin used his jutsu to cut one jaw and free Fu. Oten. Kaisei. Naruto created several sharp spikes that pierced surprisingly thick skin of monster, but it managed to run under the ground, even if wounded. Shit, those things run underground. And fourth is coming there. Looks like Kakashi-sensei was right, they rely on hearing very much. Four more waterfall shinobi, Jounin and three Chuanin, jumped into the battlefield. Fu, report. Jounin commanded. One monster killed, one wounded, two remain unharmed. Four in total in this area. Girl answered. They are coming back. Jump. Naruto yelled. But new arrivals couldn't react in time, and one of them, Chunin, was swallowed, Jounin wasn't lucky too. Worm bit off his lower body, and man would die from blood loss in less than one minute. Lange and Churiki sent wind chakra sickle-shaped blade at beasts, but it left only inch-deep wounds on them. Creatures again hid under the ground. Suddenly Jawless Worm tried to attack Sasuke, but with the help of his Sharingan Achiha boy could react in time. Hain. Hausenka. Group of small fireballs hit Monster's mouth and gullet, while Sasuke tried to sidestep. He, actually, partially succeeded in trashing from Pain Beast, only broke his arm before burrowing again. Sasuke, you're wounded, leave. Kakashi said. Seeing that said boy didn't want to do so, Silverhaired Jounin used his power of team leader and ordered him to leave. Sasuke was forced to comply. Jump. Naruto yelled again. All six ninjas that were alive jumped from the ground when Jawless Monster appeared again. Taki Chuanin weren't ready to defend themselves from beasts' tongues and were caught. Suddenly two other worms jumped from under the ground and swallowed poor Chuanins, none of the attacks that other four shinobi used didn't help freeing caught ninjas. The best that they could do now send as much explosive tags as possible into the mouth of Jawless Worm Beast burrowed under the ground and then there was an explosion. Two down, two to go and we already lost four men in this battle, Fu said sadly. Looks like these monsters can attack in groups we must be twice as cautious then. Kakashi noted. Where are they? He asked then. Two that are alive are regrouping and will attack soon. Blanche and Churiki answered. 
Three shinobi left use this small pause to find any ideas how to deal with these monsters. So far none of the attacks that hit them from outside wasn't effective. These worms were real monsters they are coming. Naruto warned. They jumped away from their position as two beasts attacked. Odin. Kaisei. Both Naruto and Fu yelled, catching one of worms in the stone prison. Urkiri. Kakashi plunged lightning blade through creature's skin. Then he took off his hand and pushed ball of explosive tags into the wound. After jumping back, silver hair down and activated tags, and beast exploded, covering everything around with its disgusting blood and flesh. Shit. Fu yelled as she sensed attack that Naruto couldn't dodge. Last worm jumped from under the ground and swallowed Blanche and Churiki. But before it could burrow completely, its body spasmed and then was cut into two. But no one saw what cut it, only Naruto sealing something on his left wrist. Vuitton. Ripushu. Blonde yelled, sending attack into Beast's belly and killing it, he looked awful. His clothes were torn into shreds, there were many bite marks on his body, and he was covered in thick stinky yellowish blown blood of the monster. I'd give anything for a low o o long hot shower right now he sighed. Three kilometers from the battlefield man in dark blue cloak with hood was sitting on the tree, watching battle through his binoculars. When the battle ended, he sighed and adjusted his round glasses. Our little friends were killed, what a pity my lord won't be happy with this after all, they were his favorite experiment in biology, he jumped on the ground. Well, anyway, I have to report him the results. Three days later Team 7 was leaving once again peaceful hidden waterfall. Those four beasts were the only ones Sasuke's arm was healed, but Sakura still acted like he was disabled, which irritated Ichiha boy greatly. Village leader and several Taki shinobi, including Fu, were seeing Team 7 home. Kakashi received S rank mission payment for his and his team's help in saving the village. Leaf ninjas bid farewell and headed home. Suddenly Fu ran after them and hugged Naruto from behind and whispered in his ear. Be safe, Blondie, I'd like to work with you again. And she kissed him on the cheek, which made Kakashi giggle perversely, and Sakura irately groaned. Sasuke showed no reaction. Pino has young sage. Chapter 5. Chuan in exams. Writing test. So, Naruto-kun how is Sasuke doing so far? Ask Sandaim Hokage. He finally managed to find some time to ask Naruto about how his long-term mission was going on. Blonde and Churiki thought for several seconds before answering. He seems to be too obsessed with fighting strong opponents, humans or not, till they are either dead or admit his superiority. During mission to the Wave Country, he killed Haku, though the boy was no danger to him or anybody else anymore. Naruto paused for a second. During our fight with those monsters that attacked Akigakura, he almost went against Kakashi's order and continued fighting, despite being wounded. Amit's not very good Siratobi said. How about his teamwork? I know the Kakashi sent stresses on it greatly. From what I observed, Sasuke will help his teammates only if it is somehow beneficial for him. Otherwise, his teamwork is equal to zero. I see Hokage side. I hope that placing him on a team will help him to grow into what true shinobi must be, but looks like we may have second Orochimaru coming. I don't think that we should act now, maybe there is still a chance that he will turn out to be good boy, but we'll need to observe him closer from now on you will continue your mission without any changes for now, Naruto-kun. And thank you for your work. Hi, Hokage Jiji. I shall do what is in my powers to protect what my father gave his life for. Naruto replied. It's nice to hear that. Hiruzen said. By the way, I was given some information about who blew your cover and made your connection with Kaiubi wide known. Looks like old war hawk Danzo have a hand in this. He, I think, wants to turn you into his personal weapon. Don't worry though, I will do whatever is in my power to protect you from this fate, right now I don't have enough information to have a solid proof that Danzo exposed you, but my Anbu are looking for more right now. Thank you, Hokage Jiji. Blanche and Churiki said. I assume that this will be all. Hokage nodded. Yes, you can go now. Dismissed. Naruto nodded and left old man's office. Saratobi looked at Twilight Kanoha through the window and sighed, lighting his pipe. I'm too old for all this. Next morning three genins of Team 7 were waiting for their sensei to appear. Sasuke was brooding under a tree about how he will kill Itachi. Sakura was thinking about some new ways go make last Ichiha go on a date with her. And Naruto was sitting, using Bridge's handrail as a backrest, and he was writing something on a rectangular pieces of paper Sasuke lifted his gaze in hope that Kakashi will appear. No such luck. But instead he saw what his blonde teammate was doing and it interested him. When he saw what exactly Naruto was drawing, Ichiha boy was a bit shocked. You know how to do explosive tags, Doh, who taught you this? Answer me. Naruto looked up at Sasuke. Why should I? He immediately regretted saying this. How dare you? Sasuke-sama asked you a question and you must answer. Pink-haired Banshee yelled. Deciding that he won't survive another yell today, Blonde Genin finally answered Sasuke's question. 
Okay, okay, Naruto sighed. Jiraiya-sensei gave me several scroll about Fainjutsu when I was younger. And when he had time, he showed me several seals. Jiraiya? That Jiraiya? Jiraiya of the Sanin? Asked Sasuke, a bit surprised. Naruto only nodded. This made brooding Ichiha explode. Why would one of the Sanin spend his time with a dope like you? He must have been training someone for Malit. Me. Naruto saw Sanin in question approach the bridge where Team 7 was and decided to play a prank on Sasuke. He inserted his index finger in his ear like he had something in it that was hampering his hearing. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat? I said why would Jiraiya teach such a lowly excuse of Sasuke felt a heavy hand being placed on his shoulder. Ninja when there is someone from Elite, like me. So you think that my godson is a lowly excuse of ninja? Said a deep voice. Looking up, Sasuke sought out Sage Jiraiya. And Sanin didn't look pleased. Hermit picked explosive tag that Naruto just drew and examined it. Looks like you are already mastered intensified explosive seal. You are truly going to be master of seals. Teach me. Sasuke shouted. Jiraiya took thinking pose. You have a drive to learn, that's good, but you offended not only to my godson, but also to my student let's make a deal. If you can land a solid hit on me, the one that I can't block or dodge, in 5 minutes, I'll think about teaching you jutsu or two, Jiraiya saw a shocked expression on Naruto's face and winked him, showing that he won't allow Sasuke to become his student. Prepare to teach me. Ichiha boy tried to hit Jiraiya, but older shinobi easily avoided being hit and jumped back, putting some distance between them. Sasuke ran towards the Sanin, unleashing barrage of hits and punches, but Jiraiya easily dodged all of them. Sasuke jumped back and produced windmill shuriken from his pouch. He threw the weapon at the Sanin. Mkade shuriken. Impressive. Jiraiya's hair moved, seemingly, on their own, forming something like a spiked wall in front of him, effectively blocking both shurikens from. But it won't work against my Hari Jizu. Sanin said as his hair returned to their normal shape. Sasuke roared and flashed through hand seals. Pain. Dikakyu. He launched big fireball at Jiraiya, who lazily unrolled small scroll that somehow appeared in his hands. Scroll already contained pretty complex seal drawn. Yukahuin. Toad Hermit sent his chakra to activate the seal. Ghosty vapor appeared from the seal, and after encompassing the fire of Sasuke's jutsu, returned back. Without waiting, Jiraiya flashed through four hand seals. Yukahuin. Kai. Sealed fireball shot back at Sasuke from the scroll. Suitan. Sir Yudin. Last Ichiha of the Hidden Leaf summoned small water dragon from the nearby river, the one that was running under their meeting spot bridge. Water dragon looked weak and was barely 7 meters long, yet it was enough to stop fireball. Why I can't do this jutsu like Kakashi or Zabuza? Why mine is so small and weak? Yelled frustrated Sasuke. Maybe you just don't have water affinity? Said Jiraiya. Look, each ninja has one two rarely three affinities, elements that best suited for them. Some jutsus won't work if you don't have needed affinity, others will be much weaker. Kakashi san is unique case. He has weak affinities for every element. But he can't use any elemental jutsu to its fullest power. Not even his prized Rikiri. Sanin paused. By the way, you have one minute left. Sasuke roared and once again ran towards older shinobi, intent to land a hit on him using every tojutsu combo he knew. But, of course, it didn't work, as Toad Hermit dodged all hits and punches without any problems, Sasuke was about to try to hit Sanin again, but Jiraiya simply dropped from his sight, even with his two Tomo at Sharingan activated, only to reappear behind him moment later and play something on his back. Time's up. Older Ninja said and activated weak shock seal he just placed on Sasuke's back. You were toying with me. I demand rematch and you will fight seriously this time. Shouted Acha. Don't overestimate yourself. Jiraiya replied. If I fraught seriously with you, you'd be dead three seconds into the fight. Sanin walked towards Naruto and produced small scrolls seemingly out of nowhere. And seeing that you failed to land a hit on me, I won't teach you anything Naruto, this is scroll with advanced seals you asked me to give you. Naruto nodded. Thank you, Jiraiya-sensei. Naruto pocketed the scroll. Okay, good. Sorry but I have to go now. My research is waiting. And Toad Sage Jiraiya shunshin away. The Kurinai led teammate, Hayuga Hinata, Inuzuka Kiba, Aburam Shino, under the name of Yuhi Kurinai, I nominate them to take you in selection exam, said red-eyed female Janin. Sandame Hokage nodded. Okay, anybody else want to nominate Jen and team to take the exam? He asked. Oh, by the way, is Kakashi-san late again? Sorry, I got on the road of life. Am I late? Said familiar voice of silver-haired Janin. No, no, you're just on time. Asuma said sarcastically. Kakashi seemed to ignore man's voice's tone. Good. 
The Kakashi led Team 7, Ichiha Sasuka, Yuzumaki Naruto, Harino Sakura, under the name of Hada Kakashi, I nominate them to take you in in selection exam. Sirotobi nodded. I take that this is all. Everybody nodded, and Hokage proceeded to fill the Chuanin exam application forms for Team 7 with Jenin's names. When this was finished, his assistants gave filled application forms to Jenin's Jounin senseis. Good. Everyone dismissed. Sandame said, when every last one of Jounin's that nominated their team, received application forms for their students. Naruto finished three more explosive tags, before Kakashi decided to grace his team with his presence. Yo. Said Mask Jounin, appearing in a swirl of wind and leaves. You are late, Kakashi sensei. Sakura yelled. Lost on the road of life. Asked Naruto, eyeing his sensei. Actually, silver haired Jounin produced three papers from his pouch. I nominated you three to take you in in selection exam. These are application forms. I, you want to take part in the exam, fill the form and bring it to the academy, room 301 on next Monday before 9 in the morning. Kakashi gave application forms to his students. Okay, this is all for today. Bye, bye. And he disappeared via shunshin. Naruto looked at his application form. What do you think, Ni Tian, should I take this exam? I know that I'm fairly strong, but who knows what can happen during the exam, but still, I want to be promoted. I don't want to do this stupid D-rank chores. He thought. I think that you should try. Kaiubi responded from her part of boy's subconscious. Her Jinchuriki nodded. Naruto was aimlessly walking through the street of Kanoha. He already filled his Shuanin exam application in, and with no mission or team training, he hadn't many things to do. Of course, he always could go train on his own, but right now Blonde and Churiki didn't feel like doing so. Suddenly, an idea struck him. He walked towards the nearest park and found secluded area. He fished out an empty message scroll for his pouch and quickly wrote a message to Yujito, saying that he will take Chuan in exams. When Naruto finished writing, he bit his thumb and flashed through hand seals. Guchius. In a cloud of white smoke small orange toad appeared. Hi Kichi. Toad nodded. Hello, Naruto-kun. What do you want? Gamakichi asked. Well, I have a work for you. Toad jumped on Naruto's head. Do you have something for me? Blonde and Churiki searched his pockets for something. When his hand returned from its trip through Blonde's pockets, it had plenty of toffees in it. Moment later every last candy was in Gamakichi's mouth. Okay, who must I do? Naruto gave message scroll to the Toad. I want you to deliver this message to Kumo Jown and Nayujito. She is my friend. Blonde boy quickly described to Toad what Nibi Jinchuriki looked like. Will you do this? No problems. And Toad leaped away. Naruto shook his head and walked out of the park and ran straight into Konohamaru and to his friend, Mogi and Yudin. Oh, hi, boss. Hokage's grandson shouted. Can you teach us a moss and jutsus? Please. Naruto sighed. Well, at least this will give him something to do for the next hour or two. Finally three kids got tired and Naruto, who still had nothing to do, decided to walk them home. Naruto was walking slowly behind children and for a moment lost them from his sight when self-proclaimed Konohamaru Kor. Disappeared behind the corner of a building. Ah. Let me down. Konohamaru cried. Naruto quickly ran there and saw a boy of about 14-15 years old in a black clothes with something in bandages on his back and a makeup or war paint on his face, sizing Hokage's grandson by the scruff of the neck. Oh, and the black clad boy had soon a hit eight. Listen here, brat. You bumped into me. I shall teach you a lesson soon a ninja said. His teammate, as Naruto assumed, blonde girl with a battle fan strapped to her back, while obviously disapproving his actions did nothing to stop him. I suggest that you put this boy down. While our villages are allies, if you harm Hokage's grandson it can start unnecessary conflict. Naruto said, reading himself to rescue Konohamaru if needed. But this brat black clad soon a ninja started. He bumped into me. He needs a lesson. Even if it was like that, the problem could be solved with just word. Naruto replied. Someone of the nine is near Kaiubi said to her container, though mental link Ichibi no Shukaku, that crazy tanuki moment later red-haired boy with a kanji for love on his forehead and big gourd on his back, appeared in swirl of the sand. Naruto looked at him. The boy had lifeless teal eyes with dark circles around them. Looks like his seal isn't working properly. This boy has chronic insomnia, this is the reason for those circles around his eyes. Most probably he can't sleep because if his conscious weakens, so does the seal and Shukaku starts destroying his host soul. This boy's seal was either done by someone with poor knowledge on the subject, or it was done this way on purpose. Why would someone do this on purpose? Naruto asked, shocked by what his Nitaian said. This boy doesn't sleep. This makes his psyche very unstable, turning him into war machine that knows no mercy. Kaiubi replied. Hankuro, you are disgraced to Suna Shinobi. 
Shukaku host said. Kenkuro immediately let Konohamaru go, and Hokage's grandson immediately ran and hid behind Naruto. I left you for only five minutes, and you already picked a fight. You already forgot why we came here. Giorgio Ara they started at boy, now known as Kankuro, said in a shaky voice. I don't care. Next time I'll kill you. Gara said in a tone like he was talking about the weather. Kankuro paled. Why yes. It should be Jinchuriki turned to Naruto. I'm sorry for any trouble my brainless teammate caused. Blonde Kanoha Jenna nodded. I assume that you are here to take a part in Shunin exams. Gara nodded. Mother tells me that you are pretty strong. What is your name? I wish to fight you. Naruto heard Kankuro whispering to his fan arm teammate, something like this boy is dead, but ignored it. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. Tsubaku no Gara. Gara turned around and began walking away. Tamari Kankuro, let's go and, Naruto I will crush you in this exam. And then all three Suna Genins disappeared. Naruto sighed, this Gara was really dangerous. Boss, you are the best. Oh, yes, these three little brats were still there. Naruto was walking towards Academy, for the hundredth time re-reading the message he got yesterday from Yujito. Two simple words. Good luck finally he saw the building where Academy resided. It was only five minutes past eight, yet both Sasuke and Sakura were there. Along with many other genins from various hidden villages. Let's go. Naruto said to his teammates, replacing Yujito's message in his hands with you in an exam application, they entered the building and went upstairs. On the second floor there were a lot of people, trying to enter room 301, which was guarded by two leaf ninja. Naruto shrugged and went up the stairs. Naruto Baka, where are you going? Sakura asked. Isn't room 301 there? Blonjin Churiki leaned forward and whispered so that only Sakura could hear him. This is the second floor. How in the hell room 301 can be there? It always was on the third floor. Pink-haired Kinoichi looked at the sign and saw small ripples on it, indicating that Jinjutsu was placed there. On the second thought, you are right. But Sasuke-sama is still the best. You should remove this illusion. I'm going to the third floor. Sasuke shouted. Naruto slapped his forehead. Idiot. So, you noticed it? One of guardians asked. Sasuke only smirked in response. Immediately, another team from the Hidden Leaf male Hayuga, girl with two buns, and green clan boy with bushy brows surrounded Sasuke. What's your name? Hayuga boy asked. When you want to learn someone's name, shouldn't you give yours first? Last Ichiha of Kanoha replied while those two argued, Hayuga's green-clad teammate appeared in front of Sakura in the good guy pose. Let's go out together. I'll protect you, youthful beauty, till I die, Yash. Boy shouted. Sakura sweat dropped. No way you are lame green-clad gen and run away in tears, Naruto coughed. Sakura, Sasuke, let's go. We don't have all day, you know. They agreed. Several minutes later, when Team 7 was crossing Big Hall, green-clad Genin that they met before jumped in front of them. He pointed at Sasuke. I am Yaofil Noble Green Beast Rock Lee. And I want to fight you, Ichiha Sasuke. I want to fight someone from Genius Clan and test my youthful abilities, Yash. Rock Lee shouted. If you are not interested in me, let me pass then. Naruto said, walking towards the door on the other side of the hall. Rock Lee nodded, showing that he won't stop him. Sakura wanted to follow Naruto, just to as far from this strange boy as she could, but decided to stay and see what her Sasuke-sama can do against him. It's about the time for you two to show up. Kakashi said, while, of course, reading his precious Icha Icha book. Naruto, quiet bored, stood by his side. Silver hair down and at his students. Sakura had a big bump on her head. Sasuke had both his chin and his ego bruised. Now you three can properly take the exam. Before Sakura could interrupt him, Jounin continued. This exam can only be taken by teams of three. I made it look like you can choose whether you want to take it or not, so that you will pressurize each other into taking the exam. You must have came here by your own free will. And seeing that you three are here, I can only do think Kakashi paused for a second. Wish you a good luck. Thank you, Sensei. Naruto said. Let's go. And they opened the door into room 301. They were greeted by many shinobi from almost every known shinobi village. Naruto stood leaning on the wall while the rest of Rookie 9 were talking to each other. No, he, of course, Naruto had several friends among them, but he just didn't feel like talking right now it continued until one of older generation genins, Kabuto Yakushi, said that they need to be quiet. The, by unknown reason, decided to help and gave some information about exam participants. Naruto listened carefully about Gara of the Desert. Even if he didn't seem to be that tough from the profile, you can never be too cautious around Jinchuriki, unstable one especially. Then, because Kabuto called Hidden Sound Minor Village, Jennings from said village attacked him. And while Kabuto dodged the attack, he somehow still got hurt. Not a moment later than this happened. Quiet down, you, worthless bastards. 
Someone roared from the big cloud of smoke that appeared in front of the blackboard. When the smoke cleared, there stood big man in a black cloak and black bandana. He had terrible scars on his face. Around his stood two dozens of Chunins in gray outfits. Thanks for waiting. I'm Marino Ibiki, the examiner for the Chunin selection exam's first test. Ibiki pointed at Hidden Sound team. Hidden Sound guys, stop doing as you please before the exam. Do you want to fail already? Three Jennings apologizes, saying that they were a bit carried away okay, it's a good opportunity to say this. There will be no fighting without the permission of the examiner. And even if permission is granted, killing your opponent won't be tolerated. Those pigs that will disobey me will be failed immediately. Do I make myself clear? Ibiki roared, sending small wave of killing intent through the auditory. All Jennings quickly nodded. Good. We will now start the first test in the Chunin exam. Instead of your current seating arrangements, Ibiki showed small piece of paper with a number to Jennings. You will pick one of these tabs and sit in the seat assigned to you. If it somehow happens that you pick a seat near your teammate, you will have to try again. When this is done, we will hand out the exams. Naruto happened to be the unluckiest one. He was assigned to sit right in front of where Ibiki stood. When everyone sat on their assigned seats, Chunins gave them exam papers. Okay, everyone have an exam paper. One of Chunins asked. When everyone said or otherwise gave positive answer, he nodded to Ibiki. There are many important rules to this test. I'll write it on the board while I explain, but questions will not be allowed, so listen carefully. Marino Ibiki began writing on the blackboard. The first rule. You guys will all start with 10 points. The is made up of 10 questions, and each one is worth a point, but the test uses a subtraction system. Basically, if you can answer all 10 questions correctly, you keep your 10 points, but if, let's say, you answer only 7 correctly, you will lose 3 points and will have 7. He paused. The second rule this is a team test. Whether you pass or not will be determined by the combined score of your teammates. So, each team will compete to see how many points they can hold on to from initial team total of 30. At this point Sakura tried to ask a question about why this is a team test, but was quickly shut up, never receiving the answer she wanted. The third rule is that during the exam anyone caught by the testing officers doing sneaky activities, namely cheating, will have two points subtracted for every offense. So there will be some who will lose all their points and ask to leave. We have our eyes on you, guys. One of Chuan and examiners said. Realize that the pathetic ones that get caught cheating will be destroying themselves. As Shinobi trying to achieve the level of Chunin, be proud ninjas. Ibiki paused again. And the final rule. Those that lose all their initial points during the test and those that don't answer any questions correctly will be failed. Along with their two teammates. We are doomed. Almost every genin at the auditory had this thought. Exam will last exactly one hour. Begin. Ibiki roared. Naruto looked at his paper. Questions there were very hard. Hell, not every Jounin could answer all nine of them correctly. Then Blanche and Shuriki thought about the rules. Something doesn't add up here reaching for his sage mode, but not activating it, Naruto counted Jenin's in auditory. 155. The number isn't aliquid to three there are two extra men they are either to watch over us, or they are the ones that have all answers, and the purpose of the test is to cheat without being caught, it's like information gathering mission okay, judging from the rules, I think second guess is right. They want us to cheat. This means I only need to find the guy who has at least one answer correctly. Tough luck, brat. Ibiki asked right into Naruto's ear, snapping him out of his thoughts. Want to quit right now? Kaiubi Jinchuriki shook his head, saying no however, Ibiki unintentionally helped Naruto. While the blonde was shaking his head, he noticed that the guy on his right had already two questions done. Too fast to think that he didn't know answers beforehand using his sensor abilities, Naruto memorized what that guy wrote for the third question, and then wrote the summary as his own answer. After doing the same for three more questions, Naruto thought that this was enough. 20 more minutes passed. During this time at least 14 teams were failed. Naruto guess about the real purpose of this test was confirmed when he saw Bun Girl from before using well-hidden mirrors to copy answer from one of AIM participants, there were 15 minutes left. This meant Ibiki laughed in an evil manner. Ah, we've gotten rid of the trash, so we'll now start the 10th question. Now before we get to it, I'd like to go over the added rules for this question. Almost every genin in the auditory groaned. When soon a ninja, Kankuro returned from the toilet, Ibiki remarked about his good timing and his dull playing. Then he returned to the business. These are the rules of desperation. Some genins visibly paled. First, for this tenth question you must decide whether you will take it or not. Choose what happens if we decide not to answer. Soon a girl with four ponytails, Tamari, asked. If you choose not to, your points will be reduced to zero, and you, along with your teammates, fail. Many shouted that they will take this question. And now the other rule. 
if you choose to take it and answer incorrectly, not only you fail this test, but you will lose the right to ever take Chuanin selection exam again. Gibba shouted that this is impossible as some people had taken Chuanin exams before. Ibiki smirked. Consider yourself unlucky. This year it's my rules. But I'm giving you a way out. Those that aren't confident enough can choose not to take this question and try again later. Ibiki paused for a second. Now, let's begin. Those that do not wish to take the 10th question, raise your hand. Once your number is confirmed, leave. 11 more teams in total left the exam. Ibiki waited for a good minute. 78 left. This year we have a lot of participants with iron will. Now to everyone still remaining he decided to add pause there, just torture these kids a little bit more I congratulate you on passing the first test. He roared for the next 10 minutes Ibiki was answering various questions about the test, suddenly something convolute banner with someone inside broke through the window. Four kunes were thrown, anchoring the banner. Meet sexy, single and deadly me, the proctor for the second test, Anko Mitarashi. Purple-haired woman, dressed in a brown trench coat, chainmail bodysuit, brown miniskirt and nothing more. There is no time to be celebrating. Now let's go. Follow me. Every gen in an auditory groaned but complied. Ira will be updated in three weeks. Kano has young sage within a month. I hope I can surprise you there winks. Kano has young sage. Chapter 6. Chunin exams. Ruins. 79 shinobi, 26 genin teams and one anko mitarashi, stopped in front of rather big gates, with all imaginable signs, saying that area behind those gates was dangerous. They could see metallic fence going far in both directions with more similar gates. Behind that fence one could see young, but still intimidatingly big, forest and old ramshackle buildings or their ruins, about three dozens of chunin proctors part of them from the first test, appeared by Anko's side. Well, kiddies, welcome to the Anbu Training Ground number 47, also known as Ruins. Though it's not my lovely forest of death, this place is very dangerous, containing both human-made traps and many dangerous animals and plant. Anko said. Before we start, let me tell you some history. As you all know, twelve and a half years ago mighty demon, Kayubi no Yoko, attacked Konoha. It destroyed more that half of the village. After the demon is killed by Yandame Hokage-sama, Sandame Hokage-sama, who retook the seat and council, decided to turn some of devastated regions of the Kanoha into the training ground. This one. This training ground is special, though, no one knows why, but plants grow there much faster, and predators in the area are much stronger than anywhere. One of the Chuanins coughed. Anko-san, I think that we should begin the test soon. Okay, enough history. Your second test task is this. Anko produced metallic container, cylinder of about 30 centimeters long and 10 in diameter and two scrolls that could fit into the container. There are 52 containers hidden in this area. Not bad enough to provide challenge, but also not good enough to make you destroy entire area to find them. Each container will be guarded by D to C rank traps. Nothing, impossible to deal with. There are 26 empty containers. 13 will contain heaven scroll Anko showed blue scroll to everyone. And 13 will contain earth scroll. This time she showed brown scroll. To pass this part of the exam you will need to find both heaven and earth scrolls and bring them to the old hospital building in the center of this area. All your teammates must be alive and able to fight. You must not open the scrolls and you have time limit of 120 hours to complete this test. 5 days. What will we eat? Choji cried. And there is plenty of food there. You just need skills to take it. Anko paused. And not become food in process. The proctor of the second test then took a pack of papers from one of the many Chuanin and Beacon Choji to take them. Pass these out. She told to the Akimichi boy. Everyone. Anko called. You must sign these agreement forms. There will be deaths in this test and if I don't have you sign these, it will all be my responsibility. She smiled a creepy smile. So, I take it that killing is allowed. Gara of the desert asked in his usual monotone voice. Several more genins had bloodthirsty smiles on their faces. Anko nodded. Yes, in this part of the test, anything goes. She paused and then quickly added. But, only after it starts, any more questions. There are 13 pairs of the scrolls. It means only 13 teams will pass this test. Asked Sakura. Anko again had creepy smile. At most 13. Anko corrected it may happen that no one will pass. The Chuanin collected the signed forms. Okay. The second test will start in about half an hour, so now go and choose the gate you will start from. They are all the same, don't worry. Oh, and one more thing. There is no quitting in the middle spend five days in the forest or die. Now, go, go, go. Jennings nodded and started walking along the fence, each team accompanied by single Chuan and team 7, stopped in front of gate number 24. Grass team that picked gate number 23 was more than interested in them, Sasuke Chihan in particular. 
everyone waited finally there was a buzzing sound. Well, you can start now. Chunin said to the Team 7, opening their gates. Three Genins immediately ran into the forest. They stopped when they were in about 200 meters from the gates and entered old building. Okay, there are two possible courses of action for us. 1. We can try and find needed scrolls first. 2. We can find that hospital building first and then try to take scrolls from other teams. Sasuke said. Actually, I think first one won't be that hard. Naruto said. And why is that, Baka? Sakura asked. These scrolls contain high-level seals. B, maybe A-ranked ones. I can sense the energy from those seals from a short distance. So we can avoid empty containers and go only after those with scrolls. But, unfortunately, seals are the same, so I can't distinguish Heaven Scroll from Earth 1. Blonjin Chiriki replied. I think that we will stick to the first plan then. Sasuke said. But in case we get separated, we need some king of password so that we can easily differentiate enemy spies from each other. Naruto and Sakura nodded. I will tell the password only once. And assume everyone to be enemy, no matter what they look like until they say this password correctly Sasu cleared his throat. The large amount of loud enemies is a friend of the shinobi, hide and remain silent. A shinobi must understand the proper time when the enemy is tired and ill prepared. Both Naruto and Sakura nodded again. Suddenly there was a loud scream echoing through the training area. Let battle for the survival began. Blonde shinobi remarked. Team 7 was about to exit their temporary hideout, but large, rhino-sized, tiger was standing in their way. Naruto was the first one to react. Fuitan. Datapa. He called, blowing Predator into the tree with a strong gust of wind. Green Ninja were jumping from one tree to another. Two of them had Kusa Hideates. Last one had none. I will go after Sasu Kun. Said female-like looking one, with Kasa on his head. Jirobo, I want you to fight against Yuzumaki Kid while I'll be entertaining with a chair. Don't kill that boy though. Make him unable to fight for 2-3 days, nothing more. We need Sasu Kun's team to pass after all. He said to a ninja with poorly done wooden mask on his face. And don't activate second level. We don't want any Anbu interfere, do we? As you wish, Arachimaru sama Jirobo replied. Good. And you, Karen, will look out for anyone who can put a crimp into my plans. Arachimaru said to the other shinobi, girl of about 15 with red hair and no hitty 8. Hi, Arachimaru sama they were already four hours in this terrible place, but Naruto was yet to sense any hidden scrolls. In these four hours they already had to fight different predators ranging from tigers to meat-eating plants and giant centipedes ten times. Currently they were approaching yet another ruin. Half-destroyed two-story building. There is one scroll. Naruto suddenly said. Then he summoned Shadow Clone to delouse any traps inside. Twelve seconds later he got memories of being stabbed by many kunai cautiously, Team 7 entered ruins. First room was clear. With his Sharingan activated, Sasuke peeked into the next room. There were many kunai jabbed into the floor and walls. In the far end of the room there was cherished container with a scroll. Naruto summoned another shadow clone to retrieve the container. Clone approached metallic cylinder and took it into its hands. Only to hear hissing sound of activated explosive tag. Clone threw the container into Sasuke's hands before explosion ended its existence. Heaven scroll. The Ichiha boy said after he opened the container. This means we only need to find Earth 1 now. Sasuke pocketed the scroll and team exited this ruins. Only to have Naruto blown away by the Futon. Datapa Jutsu, only several times more powerful than the one blonde genin used on that poor tiger. Sasuke spun around and saw attacker female-like looking grass ninja with big kusa on his head emerge from the root of particularly big tree. Bukuku how are you doing, Sasuke-kun? Grass ninja asked, bringing his right hand's index finger to his left eye, showing amber iris with slitted pupils, and unleashing killing intent that only Jounin should be able to unleash. Naruto regained conscious. His head and his back were aching, and he was lying under the tree with decent human-shaped dent on its trunk. you are pretty tough. Only one minute unconscious from such a blow looks like I'll finally be able to play with someone for long enough. Someone said. Blonde Jinchuriki immediately jumped back and prepared himself to fight. His opponent was a large man, partly bald, with three big locks of orange hair on his head. He was holding pretty thick and hard wooden facial mask in his hand. Then he broke the mask with one hand without visibly straining himself at all. Who are you? Naruto asked. You don't have to know my name. Jirobo answered before charging at Naruto. Despite his size, he was fast. Still Naruto managed to dodge Jirobo's hit, only to stare with shock at large dent in the trunk of the tree that appeared under man's fist. Without his sage mode Naruto had to avoid being hit by this man. Doten. Doryu Dango. Jirobo tore up a big stone from the ground and threw it at Naruto. Doten. Doryu Katsu. 
Naruto touched the giant boulder with one finger, sending tons of his chakra into it and split in two with him in the middle. Unharmed. So you are Tajutsu and Earth style ninjutsu user? Blonde asked. This should have been an interesting fight, but unfortunately I have no time to fight you. Naruto flashed through hand seals. Futen. Atsugai. Oten. Doryuhiki. Jirobo raised a mud wall to protect himself from wind based ninjutsu his opponent used. 30 seconds later, when winds finally died down, wall was almost destroyed, but there was no one behind it. Naruto immediately jumped back, barely avoiding being hit on his face. He blocked a punch man through at him, but power behind it was big enough to send him flying into the tree. You're good. I haven't any decent opponents for a long time. Maybe I'll play with you a little more how about we go to the next level. Black jagged triangular pattern appeared on man's visible skin. Are you working for Orochimaru? Naruto asked. I only heard about Cursed Seal. It's really an interesting thing. Jirobo roared and charged at him at least three times faster than before. The blonde Jinchuriki was still able to block the punch that was thrown at him, but it cost him a broken right arm and being sent into the next tree in line. I need Sage Mode to match this power. Cursed Seal is really powerful. Naruto sent a single kunai with powerful explosive tag at Jirobo, intent to win five or so needed seconds for himself. Why you? A bit burned, but otherwise unharmed, Jirobo charged at his opponent once again, not really noticing that Naruto's appearance changed to that of his sage mode. Jirobo tried to hit Naruto, but to his surprise, Blonde caught his fist with one hand his right arm was still healing. Naruto lifted man into the air and threw him into the half of the destroyed boulder. Why are you so strong suddenly? Jirobo asked when he could breathe again. Not telling. Blonde and Shuriki answered before flashing through hand seals. Futen. Repishu. Giant fist made of compressed air was launched at Jirobo. But before it hit its target, man disappeared in swirl of dust. Naruto sighed. He checked his right arm. Bones weren't completely reinstated, but at least he could use this arm again. Lan Jenin promised himself to give a big thank you to his knee tan for healing him, before running towards location where he sensed Sasuke fighting someone very powerful. Sasuke and Sakura were hiding the wall of the destroyed building. Both were very afraid that that strange ninja will find them. A Sasuke saw a snake. Suddenly shouted pink-haired Kinoichi. Ichiha spun around only to find unnaturally big brown snake looking at him. Sasuke jumped back and threw kunai with explosive tag into snake's maw. Not waiting to see what his attack accomplished, he took Sakura and leaped up into the trees. After several seconds of peace, Sasuke saw snake returning. Some scales on its head were missing, and right eye was completely destroyed, but Predator was still hunting. Hain. Hasenka. He launched several shuriken, hidden in small fireballs. This attack proved to be more effective as the snake was killed. But as soon as Sasuke was sure that this snake was dead, the scales behind its head broke and the saliva-covered fake grass ninja emerged. Hukuku you can't relax even for a second. Prey must always run and fight for the life. Especially when a predator is near. Ninja tried to freeze Genin with his killing intent, but this time it worked not that good. Shit. Sasuke cursed. Run Sakura. I'll give him our scroll. He shouted. Please, take our scroll and let us go. Very clever the only way to escape from the predator give him something else. Mysterious Shinobi said. Unfortunately, I don't want your scroll. I'm here after you, my Sasuke-kun. Let's see what you are capable of, Sasuke-kun. I, I must live. I need to kill him. I can't lose now. Sasuke Sharingan activated. Let's. It should have produced handful of shuriken from his pouch, along with some ninja wire. He threw weapons at his opponent, but fake grass ninja dodged them with little difficulty. Sasuke produced kunai with more ninja wire from his pouch and threw it too at the same time using attached wire to control the shuriken. Before his opponent could do anything, he was tied to the tree. Katen. Ryuka. Sasuke roared, sending fire along his ninja wire, trying to burn that strange shinobi to death. Unfortunately, that ninja appeared to be fireproof. Only his skinner mask was destroyed. He used his eyes to predict every possible way to dodge weapons and attack from blind spot, tying me to that tree and that wonderful fire jutsu, you must be mine, Sasuke-kun. Kukuku so young and already so good with his Sharingan yes, this is definitely a Chiha blood. There can't be any mistake, I need you, Sasuke-kun I like this game, but looks like it came to the end, suddenly the man jumped sideways, dodging a Fuyutan jutsu that came from panting Naruto. So you defeated my henchman. Interesting. Yes Rachimaru. He ran away. Not wanted to use second level, I think. Naruto said. Shit. Even with sage mode, I used more that 40% of chakra to fight that guy. And against Arachimaru in person, I have no chances. I have to attack and distract him while well, three of us will run. At least he hadn't killed Sasuke team or Sakura yet. I will punish him for being useless later. 
but now I have business with Sasu Kun. Kukuku Mysterious Ninja, now identified as Orochimaru, replied. I won't let you. Naruto threw single kunai with explosive tag at Orochimaru before flashing through hand seals. Fuitin. Atsugai. There was an explosion, followed by a big dome of fire, powered by wind jutsu. Blonde and Shuriki appeared by Sasuke's side, while his shadow cloned by Sakura's. We need to run. Now. Sorry, but I won't let you. Orochimaru, a bit burned but still in good condition, appeared in front of real Naruto. You are strong too, but unfortunately I'm not sure how you'll react to my gift, should I give it to you. So I'll do this Gaju Fuin. Orochimaru's right hand with purple flames around each finger connected with Naruto's stomach. Lanj and Shuriki screamed in pain before his world went black. Naruto's shadow clone disappeared. Kukuku back to our business, Sasu Kun where was I? Oh, yes, I loved our little game. You are really his brother. I can see power to crush Itachi in your eyes. W who are you? Sasu cask in shock and fear. As Naruto Kun said, I'm Orochimaru and if you want to see me again, Sasu Kun, you'll need to survive and complete this exam oh, and defeat my genin team from Odo. Snake Sanin said. What the hell? Why would I want to see you again? Ichiha boy shouted. I can give you power, Sasu Kun. Orochimaru ran through hand seals. With six sound his neck elongated and before Sasu could do anything, Sanin bit his neck. Juin Jutsu. Orochimaru's neck reverted to its normal length. Sasu Kun will look for me he will look for power. At the same moment three commas appeared on Sasuke's shoulder near his neck and he started screaming in pain before collapsing on the tree branch unconscious. You can keep you scroll. You'll need it. Bye, bye. Orochimaru melted into the tree. Sakura started crying in despair. Anko Midarashi was seating under the tree, eating her favorite dango. Suddenly bolt of pain shot through her left shoulder. Curse seal. Why? Woman though. Before she could continue, five Chuanins appeared in front of her in swirls of wind and leaves. Enko san, half an hour ago three men were found dead. The Genin team from Kusagakachur. Their faces were stolen and they were definitely killed before the first test. One of Chuanins said. Yes, that's why. Arachimaru is here. That bastard. But why? Why now? What does he want to accomplish? I need to find it out. And kill him, if I can. Call the Anbu. S rank missing Nin Arachimaru is here. I will go after him now. Anko yelled. The Chunin saluted and disappeared via Shunshin. Anko herself threw her stick with Dango away and ran into the training ground. She had a missing nin to kill. Somewhere in the training area teammate came across dispirited sight. Three bodies of Ain Genin, crushed. There were several hundreds of Senbin needles, lying on the ground, four empty umbrellas and several other weapons, as well as lots of blood on surrounding trees and ruins. Several small predators were already using them as their food. W what happened T there? Hinata asked. Someone literally crushed these genin. Shino said in his usual emotionless tone. We must be much more careful if we don't want to end like them. Kiba's dog, Akamaru whimpered in agreement. Let's pray we won't run into whoever did this. Inuzuka boy said. Four kilometers from this location soon a trio entered old hospital. Naruto woke up. He was lying on the pile of old leaves in dark room in one of old buildings scattered through the training area. His head was aching terribly, as was his stomach and his Kaiubi Ni Tan was suspiciously quiet. Blonde tried to ask her something, but failed then somebody moaned in pain on his left. Looking there he saw Sasuke. Ichiha's body was shivering as if he had high temperature. And wet shreds of clothing on his forehead only confirmed this theory, and then Naruto remembered. They fought Orochimaru. This means Naruto removed top part of his clothing and tried to summon some chakra. It was much harder that usually. First his father's seal appeared on his stomach. Then another seal appeared around first one. As I thought. God you fuin. Naruto stopped summoning his chakra, and both seals faded. Just in time so that Sakura who brought some food, didn't see anything. You woke up, Baka. She asked. For how long was I unconscious? Blonde and Shuriki asked. Sixteen hours, you, Baka. This means it's about noon of the second day. Good. We still have some time. Naruto paused for a second. I need you help. He stated. And why is that? Was pink-haired Kinoichi's reply. We are team, first. But, you see, that freak we fought, Orochimaru, used Gaju Fuin on me, and right now I'm weaker than academy student. You won't be able to protect us both we don't know when Sasuke will wake up, find scrolls and bring us to that hospital building to finish this test. Sakura sighed. And how can I help you? As an answer, Blanj and Churiki produced the scroll Jiraiya gave him week ago from his pouch and opened it on the big and pretty complex seal. This is Gaju Kane. Naruto then fished ink well and brush out of his pouch. You will draw this seal on my stomach and activate it. 
This will remove Orochimaru's seal, and I'll be able to protect us until Sasuke wakes up. Sakura nodded. Just don't do any mistakes, or results can be unpredictable and, by the way, if you memorize the seal, one day you may impress Sasuke and he will go on a date with you. This was stimulus good enough for pink-haired Kinoichi to work very hard on drawing the seal half an hour later she finished. How do I activate this thing? She asked. You must send your chakra into it. About quarter of your usual amount, if I am not mistaken. But don't worry, as soon as Arachimaru's seal is gone, I'll refill your chakra reserves. I have more than enough chakra on my own. Naruto replied. Well, at least while I slept, my reserves were refilled almost completely. His teammate nodded and concentrated, building enough chakra to activate the seal. As soon as Sakura activated the seal, Naruto screamed in pain, but tried not to trash around minute later he was back to normal, only covered in sweat and breathing heavily. Finally. By the way, you owe me a lot for healing your arm, Mary-chan. Kaiubi said. Yeah, yeah, I remember. But maybe later. I'm still in the middle of the exam. Naruto replied to his knee tie and she pouted, but agreed. Thank you. He collected his scroll, brush and ink well and put them back into his pouch. Now let's see what Oro team did to our Sasuke. Naruto put his clothes back on. That ninja Orochimaru bit Sasuke saw his neck before he disappeared Sakura said. Naruto mumbled looking at pulsing mark on Ichiha's shoulder. This is definitely Juinjutsu, also known as Cursed Seal. But this modification is unknown to me. Plus I don't know how it will react if I try to suppress it right now, so we have to wait. Luckily for us Sasuke will survive. His body at least. His mind I'm not sure whether he would be the same Sasuke we knew or not, Sakura sighed. Now, sit down, I'll refill your chakra reserves. Okay. Pink-haired Kinoichi sat on the ground. Naruto sat behind her and put his hands on her temples. Say, when you will have your chakra at your normal maximum. Sakura nodded. Then she felt something cool, like breeze, enter her body where Naruto's hands were. Hirobo. Why you fled? Orochimaru was angry. Very angry. I had to deal with Yuzumaki brat myself. But Orochimaru saw me he was too strong. Without going to second level I couldn't match his power. Man replied, nursing his hurt elbow. And Kanoha Ninja could sense it if I activated second level. Please, Orochimaru-sama, don't punish me. Jirobo begged. Snake San and sighed. Okay I agree, activating your cursed seal's second level could call unneeded attention to you. But tell me what he is capable of, that Naruto-kun. Orochimaru said. He can do high-level Doten and Fuyuten ninjutsu. He heals very fast. And he has raw strength to stop my punches with one hand or to throw me into the air. I'd say that he is at least on low Jounin level. Hirachimaru sighed again. Well looks like Kabuto needs to spy better. I was said that Naruto is barely Chunin level in strength. Now I'll have to readjust my plans. Sun was setting down. And it's surprisingly peaceful in the area. Or it seemed that it was. We have guests. Naruto, who was meditating on the border of entering sage mode said. Three human. Gen and team, I suppose. Activating his sage mode, Blanche and Chiriki went out of his team's hideout. Sakura still tried her best to cure whatever cursed seal was doing with Sasuke. And it took only 30 seconds for guests to appear. And they were the team from the hidden sound. So here you are. Go away and we will spare your life. We only need to kill Sasuke Ichiha. Boy with spiky dark blue hair said. Zaku, Orochimaru said that we can kill the others, why spare? The only female, girl with extremely long black hair, replied to her teammate. Mmm yeah, Kin, you are right, why spare their lives? First boy, Zaku, stretched his hands out. Zankuha. There was a large gust of wind from vents on Zaku's palms. Naruto dodged it, but only barely. This attack was damn fast. Blonde summoned four cage bushins and sent them to attack two other sound nins. Dosu. Understood. Musical arm. Dosu, strange, always shriveled, boy with no visible hair, activated device on his right hand, creating sound wave. All shadow clones immediately disappeared, while real Naruto fell on the ground, holding his ears. Now. Zankyukukuha. Zaku yelled, sending much more powerful and faster attack at Blanche and Churiki. Guiten. Ditapa. Two jutsus cancelled each other. Both Naruto and Sound Genin were thinking what to do next, when there was an explosion of purple chakra where Sasuke should have been. He is awake. True to Blonde's words, Ichiha appeared in the battlefield. He was surrounded by purple evil aura, his eyes held bloodlust in them, and his body was covered with flame-like black patterns. Sasuke Ichiha, I'll kill you for Orochimaru-sama. Zaku yelled. Zankyukukuha. Naruto and Sasuke jumped out of the jutsu's way. Sasuke turned his gaze to his teammate. You wait. They will die first. And he disappeared, reappearing in front of Zaku. Sound Genin reacted immediately, firing Zankuha from point blank. 
Sasuke somehow dodged this attack jumping back and right. Katen. Gariuka. Ichiha exhaled dragon-shaped fireball at Dosu. Zaku destroyed it using his Zankikuku Uha only to be attacked by Katen. Hasenka Jutsu. Zankuha. Zaku blew away fire, only to find that there were shurikens, hidden in small fireballs. Sound Genin dodged them all, but Sasuke again appeared in front of him with kunai in his hand. Sasuke inserted this kunai into Zaku's right shoulder's joint, making him scream in pain as he turned his kunai. You are proud of your hands, aren't you? Sasuke asked. He got no reply from Sound Genin, other than screams of pain. Say goodbye to them. Placing his right foot on Zaku's stomach, Sasuke gripped boy's right arm, spraying blood on the ground. Before Ichiha could do anything else, Dosu attacked him with sound waves, making Kanoha Genin do several steps back and fall on one knee. Nothing more. This made Dosu think about saving his ass. We'll give you our scroll. Just spare our lives. He asked, showing everyone Earth's scroll. Please, don't kill us. Okay, give me your scroll, I'll neutralize Sasuke. Naruto said. Dosu nodded and threw the scroll, all the time dodging Sasuke's fireballs and shurikens, while carrying Zaku and Boy's arm. Blonde and Shuriki summoned Shadow Clone, which caught the scroll, while real Naruto flashed through hand seals. Doten. Yumi Numa. Naruto created mud-filled swamp, making Sasuke unable to move. As soon as this happened Dosu put his teammate down and tried to attack real blonde, but received Futon. Repishu from point blank. Go away. You have no chances against us. He is right. Against these two I'm almost useless, Zaku is unable to fight, and you are wounded Kin said. Dosu had to agree three sound nins left the clearing Naruto came up to Sasuke, who was struggling to free himself from the swamp. Seeing that cursed seal was in complete control over boy's mind, Naruto hit the base of his neck, rendering Sasuke unconscious. Black pattern, created by cursed seal, turned red and returned into the mark. Blonde and Shuriki sighed. Arachimaru, you are psycho. He dragged unconscious Sasuke onto the grass before cancelling the swamp. Then Naruto carried his teammate back to the hideout. Inside he found unconscious Akura. He placed Sasuke on the pile of leaves and tried to wake pink-haired girl up. But what happened? What's with Sasuke-sama? She asked weakly. I remember evil aura and fear Naruto placed hand on her shoulder. That was Sasuke under the control of Cursed Seal. I had to render him unconscious before he killed me. He sighed. But on the good side, we got Earth Scroll. Now I'll seal Sasuke's mark and as soon as he wakes up normal, we will complete this test. Blonde and Shuriki came up to Sasuke and removed his t-shirt. Too bad, I don't know any strong seals to keep you and Jutsu at bay. But at least I can protect his mind from Orochimaru's seal's effects, Naruto produced Jiraiya's scroll about seals, inkwell and brush from his pouch. Then he cut his finger with kunai and let several drops of his blood fall into the ink. After that he started drawing very complex array of signs around Sasuke's mark, from time to time checking his work with the scroll, it took him more than one hour to finish the seal. Naruto set the brush aside and started molding needed amount of chakra to activate his seals. Kirakamaru Fuin. He sent all that chakra into his seal. All those symbols he drew started shrinking moving until they formed two circles of tiny runes around cursed seal. At least this will keep his head clear until we reach that hospital building Naruto said, before lying down by Sasuke's side. He was damn tired Sakura, guard us. I need to rest pink haired girl nodded. Sasuke woke up just before the dawn. He groaned, feeling his head and left shoulder aching. What happened? He asked Naruto, who was currently meditating, being on guard. Sakura was sleeping not far from him. You were attacked by S rank missing Ninorachimaru. He placed cursed seal on you and fled. You were unconscious for about 22 hours. Then you woke up with seal controlling your mind. You almost killed sound genins and threatened to kill me. Sound team gave us their earth scroll and ran away, while I neutralized, albeit temporary, your seal. Blonde and Shuriki answered glad, you are back. So we have both scrolls now. Wake Sakura up. Sasuke nooted at his pink-haired teammate. We need to complete this test. After Sakura was woken up, Team 7 headed straight to the old hospital building soon forest with rare ramshackle buildings and ruins, was replaced with desolated streets of dead city. Three genins were walking through one of those streets when Naruto suddenly stopped them. What's up, dope? Sasuke asked. Ambush. Naruto replied, fishing tag with strange seal out of his pouch. Seal look like combination of storage and explosive ones with delaying seal. Blonde attached this tag to one of his kunais and activated it. He threw kunai with the tag into the window of building on their right. Five seconds later there were cries of pain coming from that window. What was that? Ichiha asked. My special seal. Seven seconds after activation it fires 100 spikes with paralytic poison in every direction. Naruto explained. And how did you know that there was ambush? 
Sakura asked. I'm Sensor, remember? Was the answer she got. Anyway, they are no threat for next several hours. Let's go. Finally, at noon of the third day, Team 7 reached Old Hospital, located roughly in the center of training area number 47. And Naruto again stopped his teammates before they could enter the building. Why again? Sakura asked irritably. Naruto pointed at very thin wire forced inch above the floor inside. I would bush him. Blanche and Chiriki whispered while three stone clones rose from the ground. Then he casted Henge over clones, making them look like they were real Team 7, and sent them in. Clones, of course, activated the trap and were hit by Barrage of Kunais and three Kusaga Kurigen in second later. But before that trio could understand that they were fooled, Naruto and Sasuke knocked them out Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura went through second doors and found themselves in big room with no visible exits and big mosaic on the wall. What shall we do now? Sakura asked. I think that it's the time we open the scrolls. Naruto replied. Baka. They said that we must not open them. Pink-haired girl yelled at her teammate. But we already completed second test and not every team has sensor type ninjas like the dope. Means there must be other way to continue. And the only idea how these scrolls a Chiha boy said. Blanche and Shuriki nodded. I agree. Let's open them. Naruto and Sasuke produced earth and heaven scrolls from their pouches and opened them. There was explosion of smoke and one Yumi no Aruka appeared in the room. Long time no see, guys. Academy teacher said. Congratulations, you are the fourth team to complete this test by now. Haruka gestured Team 7 to follow him. I'll show you living quarters. He opened hidden door and walked trough, closing it when Team 7 entered. Follow me. I'm Haruka sensei Naruto said. I and Sasuke need to see Kakashi-sensei. It's of grave importance. Scarred Chuanan nodded. Okay, I'll tell him to visit you as soon as I see him. Team 7 was given one of hospital rooms as their living quarters until second test is finished. The room itself wasn't very big and looked like it had no renovation since Kyubi's attack. There were three hard beds with night tables, separated from each other by paper screens. While neither of three genins liked their room, it was still better than sleeping outside Naruto, and Sasuke waited three hours for their sensei to appear. Yo. Silver hired Jounin said, appearing in a swirl of wind and leaves. Haruka sent said that you had some important news. Blanche and Shuriki nodded. We ran into Orochimaru during the test. Kakashi turned the page of his orange book. Benko san ran into him too. She also said something about someone being marked. Yes. Sasuke was marked with cursed seal. Naruto said. I sealed it with Kirakamaru Fayan, but it's only temporary solution for the problem. For one two weeks at best. Sasuke's cursed seal is very powerful. I see. Lazy Jounin said Sasuke, you'll come with me, we need to reseal you Mark. The Achiha boy was about to raise an objection, but silver-haired man continued. Don't worry, you will resume this exam as soon as I'm done with you cursed seal. Sasuke nodded. Kakashi placed his hand on boy's shoulder and they both left the room via shunshin. What if Naruto accidentally learned sage mode council bashing and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.